Hello everybody, Flamin' Shark back with another video, and today we are jumping into what will officially be episode 10 of our Let's Play of Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. That's right, we are jumping into the 10th episode of the series, technically my 11th recording session because episode 1 was uh, filmed over two different sessions, but um... Ever since then, that's been my goal, is basically one recording session is equaled one part, and here we are. This is my 11th recording session, but technically episode 10 of Danganronpa, so this is a, uh, this is a pretty big milestone. I don't really know how many episodes this series is gonna be. Even with how slow I get through this game, it's still gonna probably be less parts than your typical person, just because of how long my parts are, but, um, yeah, I definitely... I definitely am excited, and we're starting from free time. Um, last episode was the beginning of chapter three, which had that ridiculous title. Uh, something having to do with, like, blah, 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 and Galactic Hero. It was a very Hifumi-centric title. Uh, we met Alter Ego in the last episode. Uh, we also we also found the picture of Mondo, Chihiro, and Leon all smiling with, in a classroom with no bars. Which I wonder if it somehow hopes peak. I don't know what's going on there. It's really interesting. I can't wait to find out. The mysteries in this series make absolutely no sense, and obviously they're re they're gonna they're gonna lead to an insane r reveal down the line. I'm almost wondering if it's gonna be some alternate dimension stuff because there was the portal at the beginning or whatever we saw at the beginning. So I don't know what's going on, but it's insane. But uh, first things first. And I thought about doing this off camera, but I decided not to because you guys, I want to give you guys my full playthrough experience. I don't want to leave out a single thing. So we are heading to Hope's Peak Academy because we have to go gamble. And we are going to gamble and gamble and gamble. And you guys are going, like this first part of the video, you guys might want to skip because I'm going to show you all the things I get from the Mono Mono machine. I think that's what it's called, right? Is the Mono Mono machine? We're about to find out. Yeah, it looks like it says Mono Mono. Yes, sir. Give it a shot. All right, let's give it a shot. And I actually took a lozenge right before recording, so here we go. Let's go. Oh, we got the vice again. That's actually good because we didn't have we didn't have it before. I have no idea if that's new or not. I hate that it doesn't actually say what the item is. That looks new, I don't remember that. Oh, we got a bonus, bonus, bonus. What's this? What do we got? Camera. I wonder if that's for Celeste, because Celeste was interested in the camera. Kitty, okay. Let's throw a six at it. Cup of noodles. Let's throw four at it. We go. All right, let's throw eight at it. I think we do. We have that? Maybe not. Let's do two. Cause sixty nine. Nice. Oh, that looks creepy. Ooh, this is. I hope you guys are enjoying this super exciting gameplay. Uh, that, that was a video game thing. That's probably for Ifumi. My theory is that's for Kyoko, uh, because I think we already had one of those. It's like a silent receiver, if I remember correctly. What on earth am I looking at? What the hell was that? 12. Give me something good. Okay. Do have we had one of those? Oh, lucky! We're gonna get another lucky, another lucky uh, bonus, bonus gift. Ah, oh, damn it! We already have one of those. We just got one of those too. I love this theme. Monokuma's theme is so good. All right. That looks like some type of food as well. Bunny ears? 
I would assume bunny ears are for... I was gonna say Junko, but maybe maybe it's for Chihiro? I don't actually know. Huh. Yeah, I don't have any coins. I'm out of uh, out of gotcha. So let's leave the area, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little. We're gonna take a little run through our presents real quick. Huh. Huh. I'm wondering if maybe Kyoko would like this. Uh. Huh. Cup of noodle. Okay. Yeah, we had we had the curry. Make a girl positively sparkle. Maybe uh, Hina would like that. Yeah, I think these are for Scarab Brooch. I don't know who this is for, honestly. Sacred by many ancient societies. I almost wonder if that's hinting for Yasuhiro, but it's hard to tell. Red scarf. A scarf belong- Oh. Huh. Maybe, uh, Hifumi? Question mark? Mondo. Definitely Mondo. From Gothic Lolita designer Ina Bauer. Oh, this is probably for Celeste then. I was assuming this was either for... I, I, I originally thought Junko, but I was like, maybe Chihiro, but interesting. So this is actually probably for Celeste or Junko. Because uh, it's from a fashion designer, but it's also a Gothic Lolita fashion designer. So this would probably work for Celeste or Junko. Yeah, we already had that, I think. Uh, yeah, these are the thing. This is what I want to give. You already know. No film in it. Adorable Reactions Collection. Huh. Oh my god, it's literally, it's literally a DVD of reaction videos. That's amazing. Especially since this came, this game is pretty old. No, we only have one of these. I thought we had... This was familiar. I knew this was a silent receiver. I swear to God, we had this. Huh. That's interesting. Did we maybe use it as a... Huh. Well, oh well. Um, yeah, okay. Let's, uh, let's see where people are. I'm thinking Toko or Jill. Um... There she is. I kind of want to talk to Kyoko as well, because I would love to learn more about Kyoko, but... I think it said 3B. Hey, Sakura. Hey, Hina. Over here, yeah. The classrooms are all the way down here on the other side of the floor. Rec room. And then all the way over here, 3B. Let's have a chat with Toko. Or Jill, even better. Uh -huh. So, how about this weather? <laughs> gotcha! We have no idea what the weather is. <laughs> hmm, is it really a good idea to hang out with Genocide Jack? Hell yeah. What, 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 what? Huh? Hey, if you don't mind hanging out with a serial killer, I don't mind hanging out with a chump. Wow. Genocide Jack and I, um, killed some time together. Wow. Did I just get a little closer to Genocide Jack? So I'm wondering, I really don't know whether to call her Genocide Jack or Genocide Jill. This is kind of memes. I wonder if Toko wouldn't like the scissors. But obviously Genocide Jill, Jack, whatever, is going to love him. Definitely. I want to give her layered shears. Where is it? Ah, layering shears. Oh my god, she doesn't like them. Because it's not her scissors and she only uses her scissors. No! Oh, I'm so stupid. 
Hey, is this? You, SOB! It's a bomb disguised as a present! You're working with everyone else to try and kill me! Well, allow me to return the favor, you bastard! I think I made her mad. She probably thinks worse of me now. God damn it. I can't believe I just messed that up. Bro. I really I really want to reload, but we got a ding dong. Oh, we got a plot moment. Oh well. Huh? Sounds like someone's here. No reloading though. That's not allowed unless we lose. Oh. Oh shit. I keep waiting for this guy to die. I I'm wondering if Taka might even commit suicide, honestly. T Taka. Ah. Uh, uh. Is it true? Can I really see Chihiro? Huh? You mean alter ego? Uh, uh. He's still alive? N no, not quite. Hmm. Let me see. I want to talk to him. T Taka? The way he is now, there's no way I can explain what's going on to him. Kyoko said we're not allowed to use alter ego. No, she said without permission. But even so- No, tell her! I can't just leave him here like this. Okay, why don't we get going? Is he just gonna be silent? Okay. Alright, here's our first story moment. Uh, oh boy, oh no, oh no, we shouldn't- Just a second. Where are you going? Huh? Hey. It's probably best if you don't drag him around with you too much, given his current condition. Kyoko looked at Taka standing beside me- behind me. Y yeah I know that. But I was getting kinda hungry. I thought we could head to the dining hall or warehouse or something. Correct. Well then, I guess that's okay. Oh boy, you are lying to Kyoko. That is bad. I thought I saw a brief flicker of doubt, but maybe it was just my imagination. Yeah, because she knows you're too much of a saw. I see genocide Jill. I have to talk to her. Is that Toko? Nope. What? 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 Oh my god. Hmm, what are you two up to? Uh -huh. Don't tell me you're gonna. You're gonna. Oh my god. The funny thing is, is that I honestly wonder if Taka and Mondo were like that after their bromance sauna battle. Hmm, yes, yes. No! No! Oh my god! Oh my god! The fact that she said it that way, having lost his new brother, Taka is ripe for the taking! So Makoto swoop, swoops in to steal him away! <laughs> Am I on fire? <laughs> I severely regretted talking to Genocide Jack, even if by accident. You SOB! But that doesn't matter right now! Have you seen Byakuya? Huh? N no, I haven't. <laughs> that face. It, what is that tongue? I love her so much. Good heavens, my love is being pushed to the limit! <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to do the laughs. I almost feel bad for him. Almost is the key word. Because he's, uh, he's such a dickhead that you, you still don't even feel bad for him. Um... It's in the bathhouse, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, the bathhouse is... Yeah, that's how you get to the dressing room. I was just making sure. Oh, wow, they just take it straight to us. Okay, so there's a laptop inside this locker, understand? And on the laptop, there's a program called Alter Ego. Ah. Uh, uh, how do I talk to him? Uh, oh, um... Well, you just tell me what you want to say, and I'll type it in for you. Ho oh. oh. ho ho ho. Do you hate Mondo? And since I couldn't stop him, do you hate me? It was clear he was forcing himself to get the words out. From his mouth, from the bottom of his heart, he forced his weakened voice to make the sounds. Hmm. Please. Uh, okay. I typed the questions exactly as Taka had asked them, and then... So, um... Do you hold yourself responsible? But... If Master could talk now, I think this is what he would say. Please, live your life for the both of us. Aww! 
It's impossible for me now, but you can still survive and escape. All of you. Jesus. That, this might actually do Taka some good, maybe. Hey, Taka. I was about to say more, but quickly closed my mouth. The one asking those questions is... Taka, right? Analyzing all available data, that's the only conclusion I can come to. Um... Master told me how close Taka and Mondo had become. So that must be why he feels responsible. The screen suddenly went dark. And what appeared next was... Uh... Stop fucking around! Um... What the fuck, Alter Ego? You're not letting yourself get crushed under the weight of that responsibility, are you? Mm. Oh, shit. Yo. A man's only worth as much as the load he can carry. You get it, right, bro? Hell, what am I saying? Of course you do. Hmm. Th that's... So... I'm sorry if I startled you. That was my attempt at a simulation using the data about Mondo that Master had given me. I figured if Taka was depressed, that's the kind of thing Mondo would have said to him. Yo. So you're just gonna stand there, huh? Just wait for things to get better? Just take your time and get all depressed? Take the time to indulge your regrets? You might even start walking again without realizing it. Sure, that kind of mediocre thinking won't might work for some people. <laughs> what if I said it with that kind of condescending tone? I don't know if this is helping talk or hurting talk. I really don't know. Uh, uh. <laughs> Taka. Oh my god. Is he about to burst out into like normal Taka? Uh, oh my uh. god. It's like resurrection. That is a that is a pose. It's starting to sink in. The way a bucket full of water sinks into a bone dry sponge. Huh? <sighs> Is he about to go Super Saiyan? Those words, deep within my heart, they're inside of me. <laughs> he actually went Super Saiyan. Well, white hair, but what the hell? T Taka? <laughs> Who the fudge is Taka? Y your eyes. F you. Hey, don't worry about it. Guess I caused kind, caused kind of a scene, huh? Shoot, man. Oh my god, he's gonna like half swear. And your voice. Yeah. I'm a new me. Yeah. I'm totally stuffed with fight and steer it now, you dumb butt. Oh my god. He still can't swear, though. Uh, okay, Taka, just calm down. What? I am calm, and don't call me Taka. That's... That's not my name anymore. I'm me. I am me. Taka let out a bone chilling howl and ran out the room. What the hell? Hey, Taka, hold on. And I took off after him. But someone stood in my way. Is this going to be Kyoko? Oh, 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 oh. Mommy. Mommy, please forgive me. You can spank me if you want. As if tagging Taka out, she walked bris briskly into the dressing room. Just a second. What do you think you're doing? K Kyoko! Oh, jeepers! Oh, um, no, see, this is just... Enough already. Don't go around doing whatever you feel like. It causes problems, and not just for me, for everyone. S sorry. Correct. If you're really sorry, you'll get out of here. Now. Okay. I don't know if we helped talk or hurt him. I really don't know. Finally, I headed back to my room, embarrassed and sullen. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. I assume we're going to get more free time after going to sleep, but... We'll have to see how it goes. But still, what was with Taka's sudden freakout? I'm seriously worried about him. Now I don't know if he's going to die because he just had a persona change. Because I've been thinking he's the most likely person to die for the third class trial. But now I'm really wondering. 
because I think, like I said, I've talked about this before, but going through the uh, the characters, I feel like the important, the mo the biggest, the most important characters left are Makoto, Byakuya, Kyoko, Toko. Now, the thing with Toko, though, is I feel like she very well could be the next killer, even though I think she she's obviously super important. And Celeste, and those are like the most important characters left. And I feel like Sakura is the other one who's probably going to live through most of this. Um, Sakura and Hina have such a bond. I don't know where that's going. I wonder if Hina might die. I don't know. Hina's an interesting one. Hiro, I feel like, is probably not going to make it. And Ifumi, I don't know. It's interesting. Mondo's a sad one. Mondo was a bit of a surprise. But other than that, like, Leon, uh, Chihiro, and Sayaka feel like some of the are interesting and then Junko is still like the probably the, that was like the purposefully shocking death of like a character you didn't see coming but also out of nowhere as well I'm seriously worried about him I think I said that already it's all good I don't know I'm, I'm being OCD with my mic moving at tiny amounts because I can't figure out how exactly I want it to be held and stuff ding dong bing bong here comes the nighttime announcement. Hmm. <clears throat> this is a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially nighttime. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then. Sweet dreams, everyone. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. That is always the best time to take a drink of water. It's nighttime already. I guess I'll have to wait till tomorrow to figure out Taka's whole thing. For now, time to sleep. Yeah, it's a new personality as a coping me mechanism for everything that happened between Chihiro and Mondo. Very, very sus stuff with Taka. But it's interesting because it, it feels like it, he's more of an open-ended character now, whereas I feel like the only thing left for him prior to that was to die. Whether by suicide or to actually get murdered by someone. Or maybe to kill someone, but that seemed unlikely. Maybe that's a little more likely now. Uh, a game console. You want to know why I hate video games? You might not believe this, but I had a best friend once. Hmm. Actually, he was my only friend? But unlike me, he had all kinds of friends. So me and him were at his house one day when a big group of guys showed up to hang out. They just brought the latest big budget video game. They sat there, lost in the game, passing the controller back and forth for hours. But not me. I just sat there watching. That's right, I just watched. What's wrong with that? I didn't care. Just by watching, I was able to nail down all the best strategies. Even though I never actually played it. And I don't plan on ever playing it in the future either. Huh. Huh. That's so interesting. I don't... Huh. Ding dong, bing bong. wonder if we'll get more free time. Good morning, everyone! It is now 7 a.m., and nighttime is officially over. Time to rise and shine! Get ready to greet another beautiful, beautiful day! day. Alright, I need to hurry up and get to the dining hall. I need to tell everyone what happened with Taka yesterday. He's probably already there. I'm sure they already found out. There we go. All right, let's see who's in the dining hall. Is it gonna be everyone plus Taka? Is there gonna be, oh, wait, it's just Hiro. You know? Yo, I've been waiting. Huh? Are you the only one here? Where is everyone else? Hmm. They went on ahead. Went on ahead to where, uh-oh. Hey, come on. We can talk about it later. For now, let's go take a bath. Bath? Oh, is it gonna be the male version of, um? are we gonna chill like, as the guy- Oh! No! Someone help! Hifumi, what's going on? Eee! Makoto's 
save me. I've never asked for anything, you for anything, but I'm asking now. Oh, did someone steal Alter Ego? Wh what happened? <laughs> oh, God, Kyoko. Sh she's trying to kill me. Kafumi pointed at Kyoko. Yeah. Huh? Kyoko's trying to kill you. Oh, no. Whew. I never said I was going to kill him. I simply asked him a question. I'd like to know why he'd made the same mistake twice. Oh, he came back. The same mistake? What did he do? So... He snuck into the dressing room in the middle of the night and accessed Alter Ego without permission. And when I caught him last night, he was hugging the laptop and breathing strangely. No! Huh? What, what were you doing? Whew. I thought I made myself clear yesterday. But since being subtle didn't work... Listen to me. I suppose I have to clarify myself further. No! Please don't kill me! Wrong. I'm not going to kill you. Merely instruct you. How very sad. Alright. Um, Hifumi, could you tell me what happened? Well... I just... I was just talking. However... Which was prohibited, was it not? I mean, you see, talking to her was just so much fun, and I just, just... Uh, um... Whoa, okay, time out, man. I can't even believe I'm about to ask this, but... Hifumi, you're not gonna tell us you fell in love or something, are you? <laughs> <laughs> then I, the cold-blooded killing machine of the underworld, would ever fall in love? That's... Well... Uh... It would seem... Wait, no way. It, is this love? According to the spirits... I happened to do a psychic reading for a certain famous CEO once, man. And that guy was seriously head over heels for a mannequin. He had a wedding and everything. How about that? And your eyes just now. I saw the same look in his eyes. You know nothing! Shut up! She's not a mannequin. She's an angel! I feel as if... And don't bother telling me angels exist! What we have can't be defined by your petty words. Uh, yeah, you're totally in love. Uh, so, how did things end up like this, man? Uh, well, at the beginning, I just wanted to hear her say master one more time. Wow. But, but then I was poking around at her settings and stuff, and saw she was a well-designed program. And it was like, how can I say... It was the first time I... I was ever able to talk like that with a normal girl. Jesus, Hifumi. I wonder if the video game story was actually with a girl or something. Because video games made me think of Hifumi, but... <sighs> but it could actually have just been a guy that he's only had one real friend and... Hmm. But she's definitely not a normal girl. What? Even when all we did was talk about my hobbies and stuff, she wasn't annoyed or disgusted or anything. <laughs> Your stories are so interesting, Hifumi. Come on, tell me more. Oh, uh, it's so sad too because Alter Ego is just, is, it, this is where it's like the reality versus an AI because Alter Ego is probably, is programmed to inquire about everything, like to learn, to gain as much data as possible. I want to learn everything you have to teach me. I suppose. That's the first time a girl's ever said anything like that to me. Besides my mom, I mean. Hey. Your mom says stuff to, like that to you? That's kind of amazing all by itself. <laughs> it's like... That's why I was just so happy. It was so much fun. And before I knew it, I found myself, you know, liking her. Her face, her personality, her voice, even her keyboard. Well... Even the keyboard? <sighs> I think you have misunderstood the situation, Hifumi. Are you okay with this? Alter Ego was not interested in who you were. It was interested in what you knew. It is an artificial intelligence. It exists to learn. Of course it wanted to hear of things it did not know. And that's the question, right? Is like, it goes against slow, like... How real, truly, is Alter Ego? 
You are an expert in many things Chihiro could not have taught it about. For what it, that is worth. Honestly. Alter Ego wants that information. That is all. I know that. I, I know. I mean, I do know that. But still. Are you saying it's totally hopeless? Uh... Oh, boy. Here comes the Super Saiyan. Let me get a drink of water. You gotta be freaking kidding me! F you! Hey, you jerks, I'm sitting here listening to you guys jibber-jabber on about whatever. Yo! Oh, Taka, are you back? <laughs> Who the hell's Taka? Huh? Uh, you? <laughs> Listen up, I'm me, got it? What the heck? Huh? You're... who? What? Don't bullcrap me, isn't it obvious? I'm Kiyotaka and Mondo. So, like... Kiondo, I guess. Yeah! I'm gonna stick a banana up your tailpipe! What? What? What the... What the heck kind of fusion is this? Oh! What's happened to you, Taka? Yeah, they had a fusion dance, a Steven Universe style. Yeah, they, they're... they're... I mean, you could also go the anime route as well. I already referenced DBZ once, but, uh... Yeah, bro. Y you two were fucking, man. I'm with Jill on this one. You two were fucking. Uh, actually... I told everyone what had happened the day before. Well, then. So because of what Alter Ego said to him... Um... Are you sure it's Alter Ego's fault? Maybe Mondo's ghost showed up and possessed him. Uh... G -g ghost no, there's, there's no such thing, Scooby! What are you whining about? Come on! What? God, you're really cheesing me off. It's so cheesy and I love it. Hey, Afumi! <laughs> yeah! I don't know what you're thinking, but... F you! Bro belongs to me! Yeah. Alter Ego. He's an exact copy of the one who gave me my soul back. <laughs> and I'm not gonna let anyone else have him ever again, fudging idiot. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't allow that. What? So it would seem. I can't withdraw. Mr. Ishimaru, since I have this opportunity, let me say this right now. That's it. I'm sure of it. Destiny has bound me and her together in the Gordian Knot of True Love! <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, me and him have been melded together in the white hot heat of friendship! Bro, it's not friendship. Stop lying to me. H hey, come on, you guys. <laughs> Mondo, talk- or sorry, Moron, talk down to me and I'll ram my fist right into all four of your vital points. Completely unforgivable! Well, I punch at the speed of sound and I don't have any arm hair, so there's no drag! Enough already. Knock it off, both of you. Hey. This doesn't belong to any one person. Chihiro left him to all of us. We can use him to finally gain access to vital clues. Mm. Kyoko's right. If anyone dares disturb our peace any further... Hey! They'll have to deal with me. Yeah, you don't want any of that smoke. <laughs> What? Wow, even even Taka or uh, Kiyomondo, or Kiyondo, sorry, Kiyondo, is like, whoa. Anyway. Until Alter Ego has finished his work, don't do anything weird. Have I made myself clear? Do I need to show you why I wear gloves? So? I can't hear you. I suppose. Y yes Yeah! I g got it. So then... Okay then, let's get out of here. We can't afford to linger too long. Hey! Are you sure it's okay to let them off with a warning? Indeed. Yes, I have a plan. It'll be fine. After watching Ifumi and Taka leave dejected, we all went back to our rooms. Free time now? Still morning, but because of everything that's happened, I'm tired already. Well, anyway, I'd have to just pull myself together. So what should I do with the rest of my day? Ah, okay, here's free time number two. I like how the free time is kind of is kind of broken up by story moments. That's really cool. Um... Um...
Oh, okay, so yeah, we actually have two of this. We only have one of this. Did I already use this? I swear I've seen this thing before. I feel like that silent receiver has gotta be for Kyoko. Let's do Kyoko. I'm a little tempted to do a Fumi, honestly, but let's do Kyoko, because she's such a bae. Um... Makes sense that she'd be in the physics lab, too. I do wonder whether that's an air purifier or not. It probably... Jesus Christ, she is, like, hiding. She is literally, like, hiding. Christ. Whew. What's the matter? Are you keeping an eye on me? <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not gonna kill anyone. She's actually getting a little scary, I'm not gonna lie. It's true. I was just about to head to the dining hall to get something to drink. <laughs> Did you want to come with me? Sure. I went to the dining hall and drank some tea with Kyoko. Kyoko and I grew a little closer today. I want to give her the receiver because she's some sort of super spy and a silent receiver. Because if we read this, right? If we actually read... Where is it? There it is. If we actually read this. A phone that for some unknown reason doesn't let you hear the person on the other end and doesn't let them hear you. That's got to be some spy shit. Hey. Damn it! Christ! Are you sure? Are you sure you're giving this to the right person? Uh-oh. I don't think she was too happy with that. Are you scared, Makoto? Huh? This would be the first time. Hey. This must be the first time we hanged out with her, especially if a not if a bad gift worked. Being trapped in a place like this. Huh. Who wouldn't be? Of course I'm scared. Being trapped in this insane school. Correct. Ah, that's good. That's good. So. Fear is proof that your imagination is functioning. Frankly, I feel bad for anyone who can't feel fear. Whew. Without imagination, you can never deduce which action to take next. But what about you? You seem totally calm. You don't act afraid at all. Wrong. I'm scared too, of course. I simply hide my emotions. There's no advantage to be gained from letting others see how you feel. You hide, huh? Like a spy? Correct. What I mean is, I'm not as foolishly open as you are. Foolishly open? Listen. That's a big oof. Also, the fear I experience is a little different from yours, I imagine. Huh? What do you mean? So... You're afraid of what you might lose, right? Correct. But I'm afraid of what I've already lost. Ooh! I'm sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> I know. She didn't bother answering any further. She just turned and... Goodbye. Huh. With that, she was gone. Well, we're still just getting to know each other. Maybe we'll talk more next time. I don't think I understand her at all yet. I kind of want to read what they actually added here. Oops. Most people worry about what they might lose in life, but she seems more concerned with what she's already lost. Hmm. Hey! Get that skill point edition. Once we were all done, I headed back to my room for a little while. That was very interesting. That implies that she's like lost her family or some shit. I guess we'll find out eventually. I still have some time. I feel like I'm wasting my time sitting around here. I should go look around. So we're still in free time, I assume. Okay, okay, damn, almost everyone's over here. For the love of God, can I find something that, like, someone... Well, we know, we know Celeste likes the Rose Whip, so let's just go to Celeste, because we, we know for sure... Jesus, almost everyone's over here. Um, okay, she's in the kitchen, all right. She's not making, um, Hifumi make her tea or whatever food she's getting. Hey, 
Hey, girl! What's up? Could it be? Ah, Makoto. I should tell you, I have recently seen the shadow of death upon you. <laughs> That's just a little joke. Absolutely, let's hang out with Celeste. <laughs> it, would, it would seem I'm growing used to your deplorable face. This is another aspect of adaptation, I suppose. I love her. Despite her thinly, thinly veiled insults, I spelt, ew, I spent some time with Celeste. Celeste and I grew a little closer today. Where's the whip? Oh wait, we don't have the whip. Oh shit. I just realized it, they, it, it stays not question mark. Did we actually, we didn't. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, um, where is the... The fun plane? Jesus. Where is... Oh, God. The special gifts over here. The school crest, the despair bat. <laughs> Crazy diamond, yep. Oh, these are scary. The ones at the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna look for um, the bunny ears. Because even though that doesn't feel like a Celeste thing, given who made them, I'm going to assume... I feel like it could be a Junko gift. I'm a little scared with this one, but I gotta, I gotta go for it. Gothic Lolita. There's no way she doesn't like this. Oh. Ha! Ah, it just so happens that the one thing I was hoping for has appeared before me. <laughs> it must be a gift from the heavens. I will receive it happily. Does that mean she liked it? Yes! Let's see. Say, Makoto, do you like Mahjong? Um, I've never actually played. Most unfortunate. Is that so? A pity. I was hoping we might play together. Are you good at it? Yes, indeed. Good? No, I am not merely good. I once played a game of Russian Roulette Mahjong and won. Jesus Christ. Well, Celeste, if, she, if you never lose a bet, I guess you would even be willing to bet your own life. R Russian Roulette? Hmm. It was a truly fierce contest put on by a half-insane billionaire in the basement of his mansion. My opponents were a fierce old man and a silver-haired boy who was said to have the devil's own luck. We played with a modified rule set. I remember well the glass tiles we used. And you won. Indeed. I defeated them both at once. I will never forget the angry, twisted looks on their faces. The crowd that had been invited to watch became positively riotous. Nobody could believe I had won. <laughs> that is one of my fonder memories. I'm really glad I didn't agree to play Mahjong with her. I mean, Mahjong would be fine, just don't play Russian Roulette Mahjong with her. Oops, not presents. I want a report card. Let's read what they put on Celeste. Celeste's Glorious Pass Part 1. I once played Russian Roulette Mahjong with a half-insane billionaire in the basement of his mansion. I won naturally. Jesus. We got another skill point. Nice. Unable to comprehend Celeste's fearsome past, I went back to my room. All right. Ding dong, bing bong. Water time. Hmm. <clears throat> this is a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially night time. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then. Sweet dreams, everyone. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Nighttime already. I guess I'll just go to bed for today. 
I'm actually going to stop here and uh, we will continue in a little bit, but I'm going to take a little break because I have some cookies in the oven. Oh boy. Not counting the two recording sessions in episode one. That was the first cut of this entire series. I've every time I've recorded, I've gone straight through with no cuts. So that's fun. Anyways, uh, it's nighttime already. I guess I'll just go to bed for today. Yeah, I was about to say, we're going to get more Monokuma Theater. What the hell even is that? It's like a metronome almost. Happy New Day! I'm the kind of guy, I don't want to celebrate a new year. I want to celebrate the dawn of every day. That, every new day. That's actually a good mo That's That's good advice, Monokuma. Because every new day deserves celebrating, so... Once again, Happy New Day! New day rocks. New day rocks. Mm. Ding dong, bing bong. I should have got more water. I'm good, though. Uh, it's time for another beautiful day. Good morning, everyone. It is now 7 a.m. and nighttime is officially over. Time to get Oops, ready to sorry. greet another beautiful day. Sorry about that. Well, I mean, you've heard it a million times, so who cares? I better get to the dining hall. That is our morning tradition. Yes, Makoto. It might be time for a murder. I'm not sure. I was kind of hoping. I, I kind of hope it's murder time just because I kind of want to get through the investigation this episode still. Oh. Taka and Kyoko are not here today. You know? I'm trying to put a little bit of accent on her saying the names because of the way she says Makoto. <laughs> Kyoko's still on guard duty, probably, man. Hmm. I have no idea about Taka. Damnation! May as well just forget about that guy. So, um... You don't have to get so mad. You know? They're rivals in love. What are you gonna do, man? Hmm. Don't put me on the same level as that, that virgin. I might catch his virginity. Really, Hifumi? But, nah, my guess is yours already infected. <laughs> huh? Wait, can you really catch it? Oh my God, Hina! <laughs> You're adorable. Stop being vulgar, let's eat breakfast. But as soon as my hands approach my food, all right, what's it gonna be? <laughs> well, that's clearly Jill. That voice! Doors to the dining hall exploded open and a figure appeared. <laughs> Hello, Genocide Jill. So in the end... So it's you, Genocide Jack, and... That's enough. Don't bother asking why we arrived at the same time. The answer should be obvious. Yep. I'll give you a hint. Uh -huh. Um! I'm wearing red lingerie today. Uh, I don't think anyone wanted to know. Huh? Hold on a second. You... Huh? <laughs> hmm? Have you reached that certain age? What? What's your top power level? Like, 35, 22, 33? <laughs> you start out big on top to try and look thinner down south. You SOB! Look at your melons! They're seriously gargantuan! Do you dunk them in milk every night or something? Ooh! You're starting to freak me out. No forgiveness! If you lay a finger on Hina, I will show you no mercy. <sighs> so, what do you want? Surely you're not here to join us for breakfast. Naturally. Of course not. I came to hear a story. A story. A story that nobody's bothered to tell me yet. Are you talking about Alter Ego? Mm. Sorry, but we can't talk about that right now. What? Why not? Huh. Because of certain circumstances. Ugh. Up till now, you haven't given a crap about anything, and now you're all concerned. I don't buy it, man. It's all clear now. I've just made me. A, I've just made a decision. When we get out of here, I'm gonna feed your body to the vultures. <laughs> That's actually interesting, though, because he just said. 
Oh my god. When we get out of here, not when I get out of here. Because he's been talking like I'm just gonna win the game and everyone else is gonna die. What kind of messed up dictator are you, man? What? But isn't this a democracy, or would you exclude those who don't fit into your tyrannical majority? That, that's not what we're doing. That's fine. Well, whatever. If nothing else, then tell me what's going on with Taka. When I saw him yesterday, I happened to notice something seemed off, so I was curious. Indeed. Taka has become utterly useless. Celeste, you don't have to say it like that. I see. Did his spirit collapse or something? Was he unable to withstand the environment? Those men who clothe themselves in the cheap fabric of justice are often the first to fall. Not the worst line he's ever said. <laughs> but perhaps that will make things all the more interesting. Interesting? Such ignorance. Let me leave you with a bit of an uh, advice. Don't come to rely on false camaraderie. Or you'll reap its bitter reward. What the heck? That's why you came? To give us this amazing advice? <laughs> it seems I am unwelcome here. Then I will grant your desire and remove myself. Mm, yes, yes. Yeah, let's get out of here. Stop talking. You don't need to come with me. Yep. You don't have to play hard to get, Master. You can just play hard. What? What? That's an adorable face. And also, she's calling him Master now. Oh, my God. That doesn't make any sense. Bianca, st Bianca started to slowly back out of the room. She might actually finally be wearing him down. Holy crap. He started picking up speed, and soon he was sprinting out of the dining hall. What? 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 He ran away? So now he's running hard to get. I see. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Yeah! Um. So, so at the end there... What was that all about? Uh, um... Just now, Byakuya was like... Um... Maybe he's like the mean guy who starts acting different or getting all flustered when things change. Hmm. Guess so. Hmm. I don't really know, honestly. Because that's the thing that, like, that's funny that you have to also realize is that... I don't know if it was a slip of the tongue, but he said, when we get out of here. And he's never, like, referenced the f idea of multiple people getting out. At least not since he decided to play the game, supposedly. Those of us left in the dining hall finished our breakfast, then went back to our rooms. Oh, wow, we have more free time. Holy crap. I'm very surprised, honestly. Who the hell do we want to... It's vegetarian. I don't know who the vegetarian is. Um... Lost in Forbidden Love Fantasy Outer Space. That might actually be for Toko, or uh, the girl, other, either Toko or Jill. And they might have different potatoes anyways. See, I'm really curious who this is for, because it's tempting to give this to Sakura, but I don't know. Someone's graduation album. I have no idea what to do with this. This is one of the most interesting things I have. Hmm. Huh. 
Huh. I don't know who would use that either. And yeah, then we get to the special things. I honestly don't know at all. I guess I'm just gonna take a stab in the dark here. I'm gonna give a ring to uh, Genocide Jills or Toko, whichever one. Yeah, they're kind of all hanging out in the same places, honestly. All right, let's try talking to Jill again. And hopefully we don't, didn't, we don't mess this up again. Mm, yes, yes. Ah, oh, it feels so nice. I think she already said that before. <laughs> oh, <laughs> never mind. Bonsai to personal freedom. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, yes, it's a great idea. <laughs> Perfect. I was starting to get totally irritated at not being able to kill anyone. My beautiful. So if I can't kill, at least I can beat the ever-loving crap out of someone. Interesting. Genocide Jack chased me around the school, her fist flailing! Did I just get a little closer to Genocide Jack? Alright, let's try it again. to take it off your hands. Does that mean she liked it? Yes, sir. Oh, 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 I was hoping we got cuts. Ah, oh. didn't get another story moment with her. I still have some time. I can't, Christ. All right. Do I have anything else I think she'd like? I really want to learn more about Toko. Like, honestly, but like, what else do I have that she might like? Where is the... Okay, this is more of a gamble, but I'm gonna try giving her the Astro Boy doll. Lost in Forbidden Love Fantasy Outer Space. I'm gonna try the Astro Boy doll. Where was she again? I know she was first floor. Oh, she's somewhere in the hallway, okay. She near her room. Oh my God, she's right there. Jesus Christ. Yep. I don't give a toot about you. You, SOB! Where'd Master go? Tell me or I'll kill you. Yeah, it's a good idea. All right, you can help me track down Master. Just like Jack and Chase and I chased after Byakuya for a while. Nice. Did I just get a little closer to Genocide Jack? This one's more of a gamble, but I'm gonna try it. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yep. Yep. All right, all same dialogue. No, no, no story, no story edition there. Unfortunate. Huh? There's something by the door. Here we go. Looks like a letter. There's a slip of paper on the floor by the door. I'd better check it out. Oh, okay. It's a piece of paper. It looks like someone must have slipped it under my door. Oh my god, it's like what happened with uh, Sayaka and Leon. Meet in the dining hall. Handwriting is really good. But to want to meet up so suddenly. Who wrote it and why? What's the point of calling me out like this? I'm kind of nervous, but there's no way I can't check it out now. I mean, you could. Alright, we're leaving. Oh boy. Are we about to get the ding dong bing bong while we're leaving? No, I don't want to check the map. That could be spoilers if they actually tell us shit. Here we go. Who's it gonna be? Or is it gonna be multiple people? Ooh. Yo! Oh, Makoto! Hero, then the letter I found in my room? You know? Yep, I wrote it. Your handwriting is really nice. Hmm. Well, I was always taught that if you had bad penmanship, a ghost would come and haunt you. Who taught you that? Why did you want to meet with me? Hmm. Oh, I just did what Kyoko asked me. Kyoko? Actually. I'm just an errand boy on this. Hmm. Anyway, what do you say to a late night bath session? Huh? 
you know? Okay, let's do it. No, I- Makoto, you dumbass! I was totally lost. Hiro grabbed me by the shoulder, pulled me close, and whispered into my ear. For serious? It's all an act, so the mastermind won't notice, bro. Everyone's waiting in the bathhouse. What? Then, did Alter Ego finish his search? Holy shit! Oh my god. Y you got it, Hero. Let's go take a dip together. I was probably louder than I needed to be. And a little gay. But me and Hero hurried to the dressing room. Oh, I'm hyped. Interesting. This is interesting, because no one's died yet. Oh my god, freaking Taka. Or, sorry, me. Or Ki Kiyondo, whatever we're calling him. As soon as I got to the dressing room, an angry voice echoed out. F you! Hey you! How long are you gonna keep us waiting? Taka's irritated voice pierced the air as he stared point pointedly at his wristwatch. Ah! It's almost 10 o'clock, you know that! Bedtime for all the good little boys and girls! <laughs> Shut up! What? What'd you say? You wanna make me- You wanna make- You want me to make you cry, little girl? Oh shit! <laughs> Taka. He seems to be even worse off than I'd heard. Well, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe he's start finally starting to grow a personality. Yeah! What? You got a lot of poop falling out of that mouth of yours, you know that? <laughs> what the heck? How rude. A maggot like you has no right to speak that way to our heaven-sent master. Oh. Huh? Are you back to your normal gloomy self? I can hardly keep track at this point. <laughs> sh sh shut up. Hey, come on. Well, anyway, everyone's here, right? Then my messenger duty is complete. Hey. You wanted us all to meet here, right, Kyoko? So what are we doing here? How about that? Isn't it obvious? It's got to have something to do with Alter Ego, right? That's right. Yeah, totally. Did he finally find a clue? What is it? A way out? The Mastermind's true identity? <sighs> hmm. Whoa. They're blue. Have they ever been blue before? I feel like that's new. <laughs> okay, let's just talk to the bay. It's gone. No! Oh, it better not have been a Fumi. Oh, this is not good. Gone? I came here a little earlier to check up on things, and that's when I discovered... Alter Ego, the laptop, has disappeared. What?! No way! You're kidding, right? Oh, um... Huh? What? She's gone... Fuck, Hifumi. F you! You can't be fudging serious! What'd you do to it? What'd you do with him? Hmm... Was it the mastermind? Did they finally notice what we were up to? Wrong. I told Alter Ego to yell if anyone he didn't recognize appeared. If it was the mastermind, I'm sure he would have alerted us. Well... You guys are all assuming the Mastermind isn't one of you, but to be fair, honestly, all the signs point towards that not being the case. Maybe we just missed it? However... I was in the laundry room right next door all day. There's no way I wouldn't have heard it. But, but, if it wasn't the Mastermind then, it was one of us. <laughs> So it was either Hifumi because he's Hifumi, or it was the spy. The solution to this particular mystery is obvious. It only could it could only have been him. Without a doubt. Mr. Ichimaru, you stole her, didn't you? What? What? I'm the ultimate moral compass. I would never do something like that. Hmm. I don't think it counts when you say it about say it about yourself like that. F you! You're the suspicious one here! You're nothing but a big jiggling sack of fat- Jesus! <laughs> Shows what you know, this is in my true form. I still have three more transformations left! Damnation! Uh, wait, I mean, it wasn't me. Everyone knows you're the thief. <laughs> Wrong, it's you. I- I'm gonna assume it's neither of them. For serious? Well, I'm sure it was one of you, so whoever did it, just hurry up and confess. Wrong. No. There's no way either one of them did it. Huh? Why not? So... I told Alter Ego to yell if either Taka or Hifumi came into the dressing room. What? <laughs> <sighs> it was a countermeasure against the clear danger that one of them might come for it. <sighs> but I never heard any yell. Indeed. Exactly, which means it wasn't them. But... Then, who was it? 
So that's it. The fundamental circumstances are becoming clear. If it wasn't the mastermind, and it, if it wasn't Taka or Hifumi, then quite simply, it was someone else. <laughs> Mako Interesting. Makoto, Celeste, Sakura, Hina, Toko, or myself. One of us must be the thief. That's terrible! Why would any of us want to steal Alter Ego? <laughs> How about this for a reason? <laughs> there is a traitor among us. Yep, Tagami thought of it. Yep, Tagami, yep. I don't think it's Tagami. I really don't think it's Tagami. Huh? Hmm. One of us is working for the mastermind, a spy. And that's the one who stole Alter Ego. Can you deny the possibility? It, it can't be. Hmm. I've actually been thinking for some time now that there might be a spy among us. The Mastermind brought someone in to help keep things moving smoothly. A spy for the Mastermind? A traitor? No, it's impossible. Something that horrible. Th there's no way. What? Why do you not speak? Are you such silent by your inability to comprehend such a possibility? Say what? I don't care. <laughs> it's like... I don't care who, someone, anyone, save her. Please rescue her. I'm begging you. I just want to see her smiling face again. Damn it. Save me here. Oh, Jesus. That is quite the sprite. How many times do they have to kill bro before they're happy? I'll beg, I'll scrap my head, I'll scrape my head across the ground. Just please give him back. So, um... This is pretty messed up, but still, I think I kind of get how they feel. At the very least. I think Alter Ego is most likely still safe. For the moment, at least. Yes, indeed. If they wanted to destroy it, they wouldn't have taken it. They would have done it right here. I see. So you're saying whoever did it has something else in mind for him. Something else. Damn it! That doesn't matter! Nothing... Nothing else matters! No matter what it takes, I'm gonna get him back! That's my promise as a man! I swear, I will save her! Using the power of love! And there's the 10 o'clock ding dong bing bong. Here's the message. Hmm. <clears throat> this is a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially nighttime. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then, sweet dreams everyone. Good night, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Oh, well, it seems like Monokuma doesn't have it yet. Even if the spy does. Hmm. It's night time. There is nothing to be done. It is unfortunate, but we will have to leave the search for tomorrow. For now, everyone get some sleep. <laughs> How can you be so casual? We don't have time to wait around. <sighs> what good are you if you are too tired? You will be much more effective after a good night's sleep. <laughs> Who gives a crap about effective? We're talking about our feelings here. Calm down. Anything we do at night brings a higher chance of the mastermind noticing us. Celeste is right. We should begin our investigation tomorrow morning. What do you think, Makoto? I agree with you. If we run around tonight in a panic, the mastermind is sure to notice, and we won't get anything done. Taka, Hifumi, I know how you feel right now, but... It's best if, just for tonight, you could try to endure it. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. Okay, then let us part for today. We will begin our search for Alter Ego in the morning. Hmm. <laughs> and you should think about what I said. Someone may very well be spying for the Mastermind. Good shit. Very good shit. Alter Ego, gone as quickly as he appeared. We'd finally discovered some small measure of hope, but even that was taken away from us, and we couldn't even put up a fight. We were given hope, and then when that hope was taken away, despair. It's just like, just like what the Mastermind is doing to us. Then, could it really be true? Whoever stole Alter Ego? Could they really be working for the Mastermind? I honestly don't have a clue. 
as to who this could be. It's not Taka. I feel like we could throw out Taka completely. So for the males, the, the, we have Byakuya and Hiro. And for the girls, we have Kyoko, Hina, Toko. I think we could throw out Toko. So Kyoko, Hina, Sakura, Celeste. Hmm. I feel like we could throw out Hifumi too. I think the only guys that could be are Tagami or Hiro, and I don't think it's Tagami. So I feel like it's either Hiro, Hina, Sakura, Celeste, or Kyoko. It's hard for me to imagine. I mean, honestly, I feel like it's either Hiro or... I kind of feel like it's Hiro, because I feel like Hiro and Kyoko are the only two I could really see, and I, I just have a feeling it's not Kyoko, but it very well could be Kyoko. That's possible for sure. If that's true. Yikes. No, it can't be. There's no way. I didn't even realize I'd yelled out that loud. Scary thing is, is the scary thing isn't the idea of someone spying on us. What's really scary is the idea that we're starting to doubt each other again. That scares me more than anything. Damn it! I threw myself into bed trying to shake off all those unsettling thoughts. Before long, I fell into a restless sleep. And time for some more Monokuma Theater. Yep. Then I'm out of water. Murder is a word with, whose definition changes with time, with place, with society. If murder is evidence of abnormality, then all of history's greatest heroes must have been abnormal. Sometimes, the murders that people forgive are way more abnormal than the ones they don't. Wow, that was such a deep line. Holy crap. Sometimes the murderers people forgive are much more abnormal than the ones they don't. And they were taught referring to murder uh, as a sign of abnormality, saying that sometimes the people who kill the most people are the ones that we forgive, you know, like, for example, presidents, for example, um, I would say the last couple U.S. presidents uh, go back quite a ways, but the last few in particular, um, you know, obviously it's not a political thing because I'm talking about both sides of the political spectrum there, but yikes, because the U.S. kills a lot of people. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously war and, and, and many, so much of death and murder, murder is through the guise of war. And that's one of the saddest things about humanity, I would say, is the idea, the concept of war. Ding dong, bing bong, by the way. Didn't mean to... Get deep for a second there. Good morning, everyone. It is now 7 a.m. and nighttime is officially over. Time to rise and shine. Get ready to greet another beautiful day. All right, sounds good. Today, we have to look for Alter Ego. Yep, it's story time now. Okay, first things first to the dining hall. All right, and this is forcing me there. I found myself in surprisingly high spirits and hurried to the dining hall. But when I found what, out what was waiting there for me, did someone die? Um, only three. Hmm. Is this it? What happened to the others? Hmm. They coming. There were only three people in the dining hall. Sakura, Hina, and Kyoko. Oh no, there's so many characters I love that are not here. Oh god, is this- the, is it finally death time? So including me, only four people? God, this is why I hate people who take their sweet time with everything. However... Anyway, let's wait a little longer for the others. Are we about to get a cutscene? No, okay. So we decided to wait in case anyone else showed up. But no matter how long we waited, it's just the four of us. Um... So, it's 8 o'clock. We've been waiting here a full hour. Hmm? Why haven't the others come? What the hell is going on? This is terrifying. Because, I mean... Hiro and Celeste have never missed a day till now. And what I'm really worried about is Hifumi and Taka. They were more eager than anyone to look for Alter Ego, and they're not here. It can't be. Something must have happened. Huh? It would seem... I was careless. I was too distracted by Alter Ego. Momonokuma gave us a motive. 
There was no way something wouldn't happen eventually. Monokuma's motive. The 10 million bucks, yep. Million dollars! Based on the reactions I could gauge, it seemed like Hero was the one most shaken by the idea of, of getting 10 mil and escaping. I've prepared this graduation present for whichever lucky student makes it out of here alive. What do you think? It's 10 million bucks! 10 million smackaroos! Nice. It's like totally wow, 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 am I right? Great voicing. Don't tell me someone did something for money. That's what I wanted to say, but I didn't bother. Wow, okay. I already understood. I understood, and I hated that I did. You never really know another person completely. Anything could happen here, and you can't consider it strange. Not really. Hey. We need to go look for the people who never showed up. Hmm. Uh, okay, let's go track them down. This is so nerve-wracking. So we know Hina... Sakura and Kyoko are safe. It's so nerve-wracking. So the, we are missing Jill slash Toko, Tagami, Taka, Hifumi, Celeste, and Hiro. Without another word, we left the dining hall. So we got to find six people. Hey. We can cover more ground if we split up. Sakura, you go check the dorms. Make sure to check all of our rooms. Makoto, you check the first floor of the school. Meanwhile, I'll check the second floor. Okay. Okay, then I guess I'll check the third floor. Anyway. Don't take any risks. If anything happens, call for help right away. But... I really hope nothing happens. So do I. Well, then. Okay, let's go. Anxiety was written across each of our faces as we went our separate ways. It's risky to split up. Without hesitating, I rushed to the first floor of the school. Especially since a murderer can kill two people. Okay, I need to look around the first floor. Alright, so our job is the first floor. Alright. So we were in the... Okay, so let's just start from the beginning. 1B. Is anyone in 1B? Toko, maybe? Nothing. Okay. Leave the area. Alright, 1A. Is anyone in 1A? Give, show me Toko. Oh, the note's still here. I haven't been in this classroom since early on. <coughs> that was terrifying. I think that was Hina, though. I don't think that was... I, at first I thought it might have been Toko. That sounded like Hina. So, someone come here! What? That was Hina. Yeah, that's what I thought. She's supposed to be checking... The third floor. Damn, we heard her? There was no time to think. I was running for the spares before I knew what was happening. Okay, the game's gonna do it for me. I flew up the stairs leading to the third floor. Right away, I saw her standing there in the hallway. P please M Makoto! Hina, what's wrong? I it's awful. The rec room door was open. A and when I looked inside, I saw... I saw... What did you see? Oh, God. I'd better get the others. R right? I, I'm gonna go get him. You go on ahead, Makoto. Before I could say anything, she was rushing downstairs. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Who's my prediction? Oh, it's Taka Hero, I think. I just don't know which one. It's not Taka. They just introduced the new character. I think it's gonna be Hero. Oh, no. The rec room. What did she see in there? Oh, I'm so scared. It, uh, please don't be Celeste. I just thought about it. It's the rec room. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, don't be Celeste. By this point, I was used to acting without thinking. So without thinking, I leapt into the rec room. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, God. Don't be Celeste. I will. I might cry. Oh, I'm so scared. Of course, it's the fucking rec room. The first thing I saw when I got in the rec room was... Oh. Oh. It was Celeste, and she was hurt. Huh. <sighs> Makoto! Uh, Makoto! C Celeste, what happened? <sighs> I was stupid. I got attacked. Attacked by who? <sighs> I am not sure. Some sort of strange man. Strange man? 
A suspicious person whose existence is so unusual I can't help but call him strange. Without a doubt, it was some sort of strange, suspicious individual. And that man attacked me with the hammer on the ground there. Interesting! What is this? Some kind of wooden hammer or something? Pretty strange design. Justice hammer? Some writing on the head? Justice Hammer 1. I, uh, maybe, uh, maybe Hifumi made it? That doesn't mean Hifumi did it, but maybe Hifumi made it? Huh. Ugh. I don't even know how to- I don't know how I'm even supposed to talk with the noises Celeste is making. That is the hammer he attacked me with. I barely managed to avoid the blow, but I stumbled and fall. I now curse my lack of daily exercise. See we're attacked with this? Justice Hammer 1. Makoto, Celeste, I have no idea who this is. Oh, okay. Okay. I found Sakura. What? S celeste what on earth happened here? Apparently, she was attacked by some kind of strange man. Mm hmm? A strange man? Tell us everything you can remember, Celeste. Be as detailed as you can. Ugh. She keeps making that sound. I don't know what to say. Well, it all happened earlier this morning. I'm so glad she's still alive, though. Christ, I, I I was gonna have a heart attack if I saw if I saw saw Celeste's dead body. Jesus Christ! But we're not out of the woods yet. There's still. I feel like Tagami. I'm more confident than even Celeste that she he's gonna be fine for a little while longer. I think. Well, it all happened earlier this morning. I woke up a little before 7 a.m. Nighttime was not yet over, but I knew it was about to end. So I decided it would be okay if I I decided to take a little stroll around the first floor. I understand now that that was a mistake. Anyway, this is where I first saw the strange man. I was immediately wary of him. He was obviously suspicious, so I decided to follow after him in secret. Why are you just calling him the strange man? As I followed, I saw him go into the rec room. I tried to peep through the gap in the door, which is when he noticed me and... Mm -hmm. And that's when you were attacked? <sighs> it happened after 7 a.m., just after nighttime had ended. So it happened just after- so if it happened just after 7 o'clock, huh. then that was just about an hour ago, right when we were all meeting in the dining hall. Uh. The attack caused me to lose consciousness, which would mean I was unconscious for about an hour. But... Well, I'm just glad you weren't hurt too badly. Uh. That is because I begged and groveled for my life. Mm. Wow, really? You did. As for me... I told him I would do anything if he spared me. I offered to lick his boots, whatever it took. Jesus! I am struggling to imagine that. I see. So you were willing to throw away all your pride. Hey, adaptation is survival. She's the one that said it. Indeed. It is a necessary skill for survival. Anyway, the important thing now is that we go search for the suspicious individual. If we do not hear it, hurry, this could become a serious problem. Celeste, what do you mean a serious problem? Really, Makoto? <laughs> what the fuck was that? Oh, she moved and I guess grunted. When I look in, looked in the rec room, I saw that the suspicious man was not alone. He had with him... Hifumi. What? H Hifumi? <laughs> After he attacked me, he dragged Hifumi away. What? You mean Hifumi was kidnapped? What is going on? Um... Shouldn't we start looking for him then? Okay, maybe Hifumi's gonna die. I don't know. This is nuts. This is way different than anything that happened in the first two uh, chapters. Listen, Celeste, did anything in particular stand out about this strange guy? <sighs> did anything stand out? Well, other than trying to be explain it, I... She took a picture! She has the camera. And that was an important story moment. It would probably be faster if I simply showed you. Show us. Indeed. This is Hifumi's hand-me-down, his digital camera. You don't mean... Actually... I was able to photograph the suspicious individual without him realizing it. Huh? Seriously? Let's see it. <laughs> I would tell you not to be shocked, but I fear it would do you no good. That strange comment in mind, we all looked at the camera. What the fuck is this going to be? Is this going to be one of the dead people? What is this going to be? Ah! Oh! oh my god, it's literally the freaking Power Ranger Voltron, like the character. That's why the chapter is named after this. 
Huh? What? Well, you were definitely right about the strange part. Their face is totally covered. Huh? Is that a robot costume? Well, okay, so we know Hifumi had nothing to do with it, and we could assume, and it sounds like, in all likelihood, Sakura, Hina, and Kyoko had nothing to do with it. So that leads us down to Tagami, Toko, Hiro. Is that it? We can rule out these five plus Hifumi. So there's Toko, Tagami, Hiro, and Taka. So it probably has to be one of those four. Is that a robot costume? As I said, a very strange and suspicious individual, yes. So this weird robot guy dragged Hifumi away? Oh god, that sound is, uh... Very nice. And I took this right after being attacked. In other words, a full hour ago. Which is why if we don't hurry, it could become a serious problem. I see. I believe I understand what happened. Well, no. There is much I don't understand, but... Hmm. That point is, someone dressed like that dragged Hifumi away. And it, ha and it happened over an hour ago. Just a second! This is bad! We have to hurry! Celeste, do you know where this mysterious man went? Let's see... The fact that they're emphasizing man so much makes me wonder if it was a girl, but I don't know. When they left the rec room, they headed left. I see. If that's true, they headed down, were headed down towards the stairs leading, they were headed towards the stairs leading down to the second floor. Then he must be down there, right? Well, an hour's passed, who knows? Hmm. The second floor, that's where Kyoko, no! Kyoko was supposed to be. Huh, speaking of which, why isn't Kyoko? No. No, there's no way. There's no way. No fucking way. I don't buy it for a second. Um... Sorry, I didn't have time to go look for it. No way. This is bad. The strange man did add to the second floor. Kyoko might run into him. We have to hurry. Kyoko's in danger. There's no way. No way. Oh, God. I... 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 I'm now going from one heart attack to another. Because Celeste and then Kyoko, are you kidding me? As soon as the words were out of my mouth, we all rushed out of the room and down to the second floor. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Hey, you two. What? Of course. What's going on? What's all the fuss? What, 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 what? Yeah, you guys playing a game or something? Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. We're down to what? Hero? The only people missing now are Hero, Kyoko. Wait. So we have Jill, we have Tagami, we have Hina, we have Sakura, we have Celeste, and we have. So it's Taka, Hifumi, Kyoko and Hiro are the only four people we don't have in our party. Yeah, you guys playing a game or something? What are you saying? Does it freaking look like we're playing a game? Listen, have either of you seen Kyoko or Hifumi? You've got to be kidding. Nope, nope, sure haven't. <laughs> are they on this floor? We just got here ourselves. I have heard some kind of uproar, so I came running. Uh -huh. We came here together. Stop talking. No, you're just stalking me. Anyway, can you guys help us look for them? What? Why? What happened? Ugh. There's no time now. We'll explain later. That's fine. Well, fine. It sounds like something interesting is going on. Okay. Hifumi! Kyoko! If you can hear me, say something! Her voice echoed down the hall in vain. Hmm? Oh, no. Oh! Did you hear something? Hmm. Maybe. Perhaps. I think it came from... The library, oh no, oh god, oh god, oh please, oh fuck, oh fuck. Okay. The library, okay, let's go. That was way too excited. Or not excited, but like, we ran to the library as fast as our legs would carry us. Let's do it. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh fuck, oh fuck. Oh god, they're doing it again. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. When we open the door to the library. Uh. <laughs> he's bleeding. But he's still alive. It hurts. It hurts. We found Hifumi seriously injured. Uh, are you okay? Um. I'm glad to see you're still alive. <laughs> it's super bad, though. Look at all the blood. What? How did you get hurt? <laughs> that guy hit me. What guy? <laughs> Robo Justice, or 
That's what I decided to call him just now. What? What did you say? What are you talking about? Yeah, he doesn't. He hasn't even heard the story yet. <laughs> that, that guy was Robo Justice. Indeed. This Robo Justice you are referring to is this, is it not? What the hell am I looking at? <laughs> I know, right, Tagami? This is the one that attacks Celeste and Hifumi. Isn't that right, Hifumi? <laughs> This is unforgivable! Yeah, that's him, I'm sure of it. Robo Justice! It can't be! What is that reaction? Robo Justice, huh? Damn. This just keeps getting stranger. Um, there's Mallet, it's his two on it. It's a hammer, just like the one Celeste was attacked with in the rec room, but this one is Justice Hammer 2? On top of that, this one is actually a little bigger than the first one. <laughs> he attacked me with that hammer. He bumped me right on the head with it. Well... A hammer that big? I'm surprised you're still okay. <laughs> I'm not okay. Look at all this blood. Hey. Protein helps heal wounds, you know. Would you like some? <laughs> I have never heard such a thing. Are you sure it isn't just you? So the only people that are missing now are Hiro and Taka, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, Tim! <laughs> A robot of justice, huh? Now things are really starting to get exciting. What kind of special moves does it have? Can it fly? Can it combine? Yeah, like a Power Ranger or a Voltron. I do enjoy some Voltron. <laughs> what? Why is he here? Are you okay with this? Let us not concern ourselves with him. Probably means either Hiro or Taka's dead. But if Hiro or Taka's dead, you would think it would have to be the other person, but then that'd be the red herring, I guess. What we need to do now is get Hifumi to the nurse's office right away. Yeah, I was about to comment on that. We have a nurse's office now, which is good. Whatever else we do, he needs to be treated as soon as possible. Yeah. You're right. Let's go. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. We moved Ifumi to the nurse's office on the first floor so we could take care of his injuries. Hmm. How are you feeling, Hifumi? You want me to take a look at you? Um. I I'm okay. I think I stopped bleeding. I'm still kind of dizzy, though. So then... Perhaps you should rest here a while. I suppose. Uh, yeah, good idea. Well then. The rest of us should get back to looking for that mystery assailant. Yes, indeed. Before another victim appears. The justice hammer seems to be increasing in size. First one and now two. So in other words... If there is a justice hammer three, we can only assume it is even bigger than the first two. Oh! You got hit with anything bigger than that, you'd be dead for sure. Hmm. Tell us what happened to you, Hifumi. Um... Well, I woke up early this morning and started looking for Alter Ego ahead of everyone else. Oh yeah, we never found Kyoko, by the way. I'm derping on that. Kyoko, Hiro, and... Kyoko, Hiro, and, um... Taka. Well, I woke up early this morning and started looking for our Alter Ego ahead of everyone else. I went to the third floor. That's where the strange costume man attacked me. Hmm. That must be what I witnessed around 7 this morning. Well... After that, he dragged me to the library and whack! Down came the hammer. That must have been 30 or 40 minutes ago? Hmm. At around 7.30, in other words. We would have still been in the dining hall. Which means Hina, Sakura, and I were together and Kyoko was still with us, which confirms that it cannot be Hina, Sakura, Kyoko, or Makoto. So we all have alibis, yes. <laughs> I was in the laundry room, doing my laundry. Yes! His black underwear is as black as the pitch black darkness of the blackest night. That almost sounded like a freaking Gato reference. I do love me some Gato. He is a goaded prosecutor. What? Why do you know that? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Because I was peeking. Anyway, so that means that Byakuya and Toko were together at the time. Yes, assuming they are being honest, they, they cover each other's alibis. Meaning they also have alibis. 
The only ones who don't have alibis for when Celeste and Ifumi were attacked are the only two we haven't seen yet, Hiro and Taka. That's it, right? Very strange. By the way, what happened to Kyoko? I haven't seen her anywhere. Um... Oh, yeah, she was supposed to be checking the second floor, but I didn't see her up there at all. Ugh. Where could she have disappeared to? Hmm. She's disappeared, huh? What a strange woman. So that's it. She might be exactly as I suspected. Ah, does he think Taga uh, Kyoko is the spy? It's definitely possible. H hold on! Kyoko was with us in the dining hall when Celeste and Afumi were attacked, so that's nah, not... Hmm. I'm not talking about who attacked them. Huh? In other words... I'm referring to what we talked about last night, who the Mastermind spy might be. Are you saying Kyoko's working with the Mastermind? It makes logical sense. Probably not, but it's definitely a possibility. Th that's not possible. What? Isn't it? This woman, who seems almost eager to handle dead bodies, hasn't even revealed her true identity. Hey, save this discussion for later. Right now we need to focus on finding this suspicious individual. Okay. Yeah, if we don't hear her, there's only going to be more victims. That might be why Kyoko and Taka and Hiro haven't shown up yet. She she's right. We have to do something about that mystery man first. Um... Don't worry about me. I'll catch up with you guys after I rest for a bit. <laughs> Understood. Take care of yourself. Well, then. Okay, let's go. Hmm. So whoever that is running around, why are they wearing that weird costume? <laughs> Don't bother looking for reason from a deviant. What to do? What to do? So, what are we going to do? Split up and look around? Huh. Our opponent is very dangerous. We don't know what they're capable of, even here. What? What's wrong? Ugh. I saw a shadow. Someone moving around at the top of the stairs. Huh? R really? Ugh. Up on the second floor, then! Damn. You bastard, you won't get away from me. Yeah, Sakura probably kicked out. Kicked the real Robo Justice sass. We all shot towards the stairs. He must be around here somewhere. Let's split up and corner him. Well. But don't take any chances. As soon as you find him, call out and I'll come running. Or, call out and I'll come running. Oh. Oh, okay, but what should we yell? Just a second. Anything, it doesn't matter. So then. Then is, ha, okay. What are you saying? Ha, or do ya, or whatever you want. Just yell loud enough so we can hear you. <laughs> Do ya? I've never heard such a reaction. Hmm. Okay, whatever. Just hurry up and start looking, okay? Let's go. Okay, Celeste is being sus as hell. I'm a little suspicious of her. I don't know how she could be Robo Justice, but the, 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 the camera doesn't have a timer, so I don't know how she could have took a take take took the picture. But she could have hypothetically beat herself up and done all this to make herself look less suspicious, but I don't know how she could have took the picture. <laughs> hey, Mr. Robot, where are you hiding? If you don't come out, we're gonna decommission ya. We spread out in every direction to track down the costume suspect. Damn, even in an emergency, mate. All right, let's check out the boys' bathroom. All right, all good. been a little ah! oh there's the scream that strange cry that was celeste okay that had to be celeste came from the floor above she's on the third floor dude i am so suspicious of celeste i don't know what she's doing but this is suspicious as hell i sprinted up to the third floor it feels like she's leading us on a wild goose everyone. chase over here everyone everyone who heard the scream had come running just a second. Celeste, what's wrong? What? That was a rather intense scream for someone like you. Ugh. I saw him, that strange costume man. I don't know what she's doing, but she is... She is... I am getting really suspicious of Celeste. He ran off as soon as I screamed. I was blocking the stairs, so he headed further down the into the hallway and disappeared. He must be down this hall. Come on, let's go. Now. Achoo! Oh, time for Toko. 
Huh? Huh? Wow, it's really true. Hmm. That doesn't matter right now. No! Ifumi? It's not like Ifumi. Huh? Huh? What, what was that? Okay. That came from downstairs. It must have been... Okay, are there two people? Either Celeste is leading us on a wired goose chase or there's two people. Ifumi, he's in the nurse's office. This is bad. Come on, we have to go back. What? What about the suspect? We've gone to all this trouble to capture him, right? Hmm. Oh, Jesus. And now she's all composed. I don't know what's going on. This is insane. Then why don't we split into two groups? It's all clear now. I'll lead the hunting party. That seems much more interesting. So then... Very well. Then Makoto and Hina, you can come with me to the nurse's office. I will lead the capture of the suspicious individual to Toko, Sakura, and Byakuya. So then. We'll handle it. Just take, go take care of Ifumi. Okay, you guys be careful. With that, we split into two groups. So, me, Celeste, and Hina ran down, all ran down stairs to the first floor. Holy shit, this- Just a second! This case is going to be absolute fucking nightmare. I can already tell. Who the hell is gonna end up dead, though? He's in the nurse's office. Let's go! But I don't think it's gonna be- I don't think it's gonna be Hifumi. I'm sure Hifumi's fine. Maybe, maybe, maybe. We stormed into the nurse's office, and what greeted us was... A world of dripping crimson. Oh, shit. Um. Um. Oh! Oh, shit. I... I actually didn't think that would be the murder. Holy shit, Hifumi. He got his head bludgeoned. So it had to be... There's only three suspects, right? It had to be Kyoko, Kiro, Kiyotaka, or Yasuhiro. There's no one else it could have been. Because we still have not found any of those three. It had to be one of those three. Jesus Christ. Everything was covered in red. And the center of all this red was... <laughs> Hifumi! No! Ah! What, what the... It looks like something very bad has happened. I certainly was not expecting this. I did not imagine that Hifumi would be murdered. No way! M murdered You're not serious, are you? He's not really dead, is he? Yep, we found the body. Yep. 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 A body has been discovered! Yep. After a certain amount of time, which you may use however you like, the class trial will begin. Holy shit, Hifumi. Jesus, then, then there were nine. So the only guys left are Yasuhiro, Makoto, and Tagami, right? No, no, there's another guy. Yasuhiro, Taka... Tagami and uh, Makoto. And then the girls, we have Hina, Sakura, Celeste, Toko, and Kyoko. But we have no idea where Kyoko, Taka, or Yasuhiro is, or Hiro. Jesus Christ. What the? Okay. That was the body discovery announcement. The body discovery announcement. When three or more people discover a body after a murder, that's what plays. Since we just heard it, that means... Oh my god, are the other three gonna find a body? Hmm. It must mean... Hifumi... Someone killed him. One of us. One of us? Uh. And look at that. So let's say that she pointed at something murder hammer... Or the hammer number three, right? Something on the floor. Something that had also been on the floor at the last two... After the last two surprise attacks. So the investigation has begun. Um. Hmm. Hmm. 
What do I want to do here? Do I want to stop here? Ah, this is tempting. Hmm, what time is it? Let me actually take a look at the time. Okay, this has been a pretty decent length episode. I think we are going to stop here. Next time on Dong and Rappa, we're going to do the investigation of Ifumi's murder. Uh, and we'll get up to the class trial, obviously. And then after that, we'll see if we can do the class trial in one day. I don't know if that's being too ambitious moving forward, but that's what we'll try to do anyways. But next time on Danganronpa, we will investigate Hifumi's death. Because this is how far... I wanted to get up to where we found the death. And it turns out it was Hifumi. I'm still concerned because I, there's a part of me that almost wonders if there could be a second murder. Because we still don't know what happened to, to uh, Taka... Yasuhiro or Kyoko so I'm still concerned and of course there's a spy is getting thrown around as well so there's a lot of stuff going on but I had this thought that because and the weird thing is is Celeste said groups of three too which was a little weird like she specified that which made sense because there were six of us but even still it takes three people to get a body discovery announcement so I almost wonder if it's like okay so we're going to find Hifumi and you guys are going to find the other body whoever that is I don't know why she would have killed two people though that doesn't really i don't know i don't know what's going on i don't trust celeste but it seems like her alibi is pretty tight i don't know if it's airtight i don't i wouldn't go that far but she seems okay but she's acting sus but i don't know what's going on this is wild as always with danganronpa i'm super excited to see where this goes and uh yeah i'm just gonna take a break here and uh yeah, I'm actually, I recorded this the night after, so this is, uh, April, well, now it's 1.30 in the morning on April 8th, but I started the recording at around, uh, a little after 11 on April 7th, so this is, uh, another night, uh, like, consecutive nights, uh, April 7th, 2021, where I'm recording Danganronpa, and I'm trying to, because I'm getting back into the groove with reactions, and I'm gonna try to, on most nights, try to record both, a uh, reaction video and a part of DGR. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. This was the 10th episode of Dong and Rampa. I'm very excited to share these with you eventually. Probably not for a long time. That's why I'm logging when I when I record each part. Just, to, just so you guys have an idea of how long it took for any of these to come out. But, uh, anyways, next time on Dong and Rampa, we will investigate Hifumi's murder. And hopefully find Kyoko, uh, Hiro, and Taka. And hopefully nobody else is dead. Um... But so far, it seems like my favorite characters are more or less avoiding the axe so far. But I am scared because we are starting to get deeper into this game. And the number of characters is starting to fall. We have now entered single digits. So we're almost halfway through the cast. Because there were 15 originally. And there is the 16th student. We don't know what that is. I suppose it's possible that Robo Justice is the 16th student. Uh, but I don't know. Who knows what's go going on. But I'm really excited to see where this goes. And... Um, I just thought of that, that Robo Justice could be none of us. Because cause that, that could be crazy if, like, all of... Because almost all of us have alibis. There's really only a couple people it could be, hypothetically speaking. So, I don't know what's going on. But whatever the case may be, it should be fun. So, uh, yeah, that was another fun episode of DGR. I'm really enjoying this game. I think you guys can tell just how much I'm enjoying it. But, um, like I said, we'll investigate Hifumi's murder next time. So, uh, without any further ado, it's time for me to bid you adieu. Flamin' Shark signing out. Hope you guys have a wonderful, fantastical day. And I'll see you next time with another video. Thanks for watching. Peace. Hello, everybody. Flamin' Shark back with another video. And today we're jumping into what I believe should be episode 11. Or maybe even part 2 of episode 10. I think episode 10 was pretty short. Um, and I might run with it. Because I don't want all the parts to be like over 2 hours. But, um... I think episode 10 was, if I do run with it the way I do, one of the shortest episodes of Danganronpa that I've done. So I might I might combine it and maybe either the last one or combine it with this one or whatever. There might be some fusion of episodes. Probably not, though. I think if there is one, this would just be part 2 of episode 10. But I assume, if not, this is episode 11 of Danganronpa, Trigger Happy Havoc. We just found Hifumi's body, which is pretty sus. I mean, look at this guy. Like, this boy got wrecked. Um, I really have no idea who did it. I'm a little suspicious of Celeste, but I don't really 
have any strong indication as to who the the killer the blackened is in this case just yet um i'm really jazzed to do this especially because i'm recording this on april 9th or technically april 10th it's about like i think one in the morning or maybe even 1 30 in the morning i'm just out of the shower um and as with quite a few episodes of this series i am recording this with no shirt i bet you ladies and maybe some of you guys are very excited to hear that but uh Regardless, I am very interested in, um, in jumping into this episode. It should be a lot of fun. I'm definitely curious to see where this goes. And, uh, yeah, Hifumi got wrecked, so let's look at the hammer. I can't remember if I did or not. Another hammer. Justice Hammer 3. That's even bigger than the other two. Okay. Just as I suspected, one strike from that and you are finished. I don't even know, like, if her voice is even as fitting because she keeps making these, like, weird noises and faces we haven't seen, and then... Then the killer... There can be no doubt the suspicious individual. Going by what Hifumi called him, the culprit must be Robo-Justice. Whoever's hiding in that costume is the one that killed Hifumi. I, I, I feel like I don't know how to do her voice right now because she's sus, but... Wait... You saw him on the third floor, right? Running back into the hall? So how did he end up in the nurse's office? You're not saying they, like, teleported or something, right? Are you okay with this? We can figure out that part later. Right now, we have to tell the others. Y you're right. So then... So it's interesting, because Celeste is suspicious in a similar way to Tagami. He she feels like she's running the show, and I'm almost wondering if Celeste is going to be our investigation partner. And that would also be suspicious, because Celeste, for the most part, has, like, kind of just been lackadaisical. And if she's getting so invested in this, I wonder if this is her bet. Like, I'm going to win the 10 million. And, and even though she has a lot of money and doesn't need the money, she just wants more money because that's her nature uh, to take that bet anyways. Because obviously, even though she is super comfortable, she obviously still gambles because she enjoys it. Then shall we go? But it's one of those things where it's kind of hard for me to... I don't know, like, the whole robo-justice thing, I feel like might be all a one big red herring, but at, at minimum, it's probably an accomplice. <sighs> Hina, snap out of it. Huh? Are you okay, Hina? Sorry. S sorry, I'm not sure I can move right now. Um... I don't know, it just sounds, the uh, the audio just sounds louder and normal to me, I don't know why. So, sorry, I'm not sure I can move right now. I I'm feeling kinda... Hmm. This is a problem, we can't just leave Hina here alone. Okay, then I'll go get everyone. You stay here with Hina. <sighs> Very well, I'll leave it to you then. Okay, I'll be back soon. I tried to sound confident and upbeat, but I still hadn't stopped trembling from what I'd just been through. Yeah, another potato is murdered. So I got this weird feeling that Toko... So I, this, is, this is my kind of base theory because they introduced it in the last case. I'm wondering if Toko, Byakuya, and Sakura... At the same time we found Hifumi, found another body. That would be crazy. And it'd be like, how did this one person kill these two people? Because obviously, there's still three characters unaccounted for. We have Yasuhiro unaccounted for. We have Kyoko unaccounted for. And we have Kiyotaka uh, unaccounted for. And out of the three, I, I really don't know. I mean, it'd be one of the... I really don't know, honestly. Um, I mean, I can't imagine Kyoko's gonna die before we learn about her. Even though they could do the thing where we learn about her after she dies, but I really don't think they're going to do that. But I don't know. You never know. And there is always the chance she is the spy. It does feel like that, but I feel like by the end of this trial, I feel like the spy is probably going to get revealed, but you never know. That could be a chapter four thing. I, yeah, I think I said that. And there's the badass... Uh, every, yeah, everyone's on the third floor. I have to hurry. You know the deal. Okay, it's just going to take me straight there. This is where everyone was chasing after the suspicious individual. This is what I'm afraid of, is what if a second character died? Where was he headed? Celeste, what's wrong? 
That was a rather intense scream for someone like you. I saw him, the strange costume man. He ran off as soon as I screamed. I was blocking the stairs, so he headed further down into the hallway and disappeared. Makoto. He ran off, going further down the hallway. Way into the back of the hallway? So, like, towards the, like, physics labs, maybe? Let's check the art room. It's letting me check the art room. Okay, let's check the repository now. This is where we found the picture. Okay, nothing. All right. So then I, my initial thought was the physics room, but I wanted to check the art room first. But I, I get the feeling, yeah, we're going to... I, I almost wonder if they somehow use that big machine to murder the... Murder the Vic. Um, which way did we come from? Oh, yeah, yeah. This is the one that's less color, and then it gets gray as you head towards the physics room. Oh, boy. Here we go. Here we go. I think it's going to be in the physics room. Let's see what happened. Um, um, as far as I can tell, there's nobody here. But still, I feel some kind of presence. Yeah, I'm sure I can feel someone's presence. Are you about to see Robo Justice? This presence. Is it coming from over there in the back? Oh yeah, we're um Okay, let's see. Uh wait. Oh yeah, there's a second room for this. Oh god. Oh Jesus. Oh, what are we about to see? I leapt through the doorway. And when I did, I found Oh no, yep. Okay, who's it gonna be? I'm gonna say it's gonna be Hero. Because Taka has a story arc, and I don't think Kyoko's gonna die, probably. The second nightmare of the day was waiting there to greet me. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't... I mean, I don't really want any of them to die, but... Ooh. Ooh. Um... Oh! I was not... I really... I really was not expecting Taka. I was really not expecting Taka. I really figured, I really thought it was going to be Hero. Holy shit. That's so interesting that they, that he, that they built up this new character and also his hair is black again. Holy shit. Okay. Holy crap, guys. We are down to what, eight now? Oh, God. This, we really had the double murder. Makoto. Tagami. And Hero. There's only three guys left, by the way. Because this is a double guy death case. Kyoko, Hina, Toko, Sakura, and Celeste. Wow. Five girls in a row. Like, the three girls, quote-unquote, that died are the first one. And then the last two. Um, so, yeah. We are down to five girls and three guys if this sticks. Holy shit. And I imagine it does. Because I... I can't... I mean, I just want to mention that because because there's two deaths, like I, I th there's also the thought of a fake. Like I, I thought I I've thought of the I, I've thought of this idea, if we ever encountered a double death scenario, it's like could one of them be fake? Because I thought I had this thought: could we find both of the bodies at the same time? Monokuma gave us no indication that there was one uh, that was there was multiple bodies found, or there were two deaths. So I'm wondering. Because I'm assuming Toko, Byakuya, and Sakura are already going to be here. And maybe Hiro and Kyoko as well. Because uh, we still have no idea where Hiro or Kyoko is. I don't know what's going on. And the other possibility is, what if there's two different perps? Uh, what if the Vix were killed by two different people? And then it's like, a, it's a class trial for multiple deaths. So you, you could be allowed to accuse multiple people of the deaths or you could accuse just one person. And obviously, if you don't get both deaths right, whether it's a single person who killed both of them or two separate people who killed them, then you lose because, you know, there was a blackened who graduated. And, and that would actually be a crazy idea. It's like, oh, somebody got murdered. This is my chance to murder someone. That would be crazy if someone had that thought. So there is the possibility it was two different people. Now, of course, if two different people did this, and that means we would have to accuse... That would mean that by the end of this trial, we'd have six characters left. That's pretty low. Um, 
especially for potentially t- uh, two more trials. But I don't know. I don't know how they're going to structure the end of this game. So we'll see. But this is getting really spicy. Holy crap. This is this is pretty. This looks like this case looks like it's going to be a doozy is all I'm going to say. There in a pool of his un- own blood ugh, was Taka dead. Holy shit. Next Generation Legends Sound Call of the Galactic Hero. Deadly Life. It's now Deadly Life. And that's where I should have stopped the last episode. You know, I should have known. Okay, now I know that, yeah, there, there's the moment where daily life becomes deadly life. I should have known. Hifumi's body, yeah, because Hifumi is clearly dead. And they both got bashed in the head, but there's no sign of a mallet in this one. Hifumi's body discovered in the nurse's office. Taka's body discovered in the equipment room. I was witness to two nightmares, one right after another. No, they weren't nightmares. This is harsh reality. Now, are the other people here? The true nightmare is the reality, the reality I have to face every day. That is very deep, Makoto. But still. Okay, so... Toko passed out because she saw blood and we see her on the ground there. Is that why we didn't get an announcement? Or was that the announcement? I wonder if we're about to get an announcement now. Because if we get an announcement now, then that would confirm that both of them are in fact dead. I wonder if Toko counted to the announcement or not. Why is this happening? Yikes. Toko? Don't tell me. Toko too? Hm. Relax. She just passed out when she saw the blood. The blood? Oh, that's right. When Toko is, um, Toko, she has a fear of blood, huh? <laughs> We've tried everything to get her to wake up, but no luck. Just leave her be for now. It's like he said, I should just leave her alone for now. I suck to Sakura. Oh, I just saw the mallet. I just saw the mallet. It just wasn't right next to the Vic. Okay. Damn, neither of them are talking. All right, let's look at this mallet. Does it say number four? Another hammer. It doesn't look like it has blood on it. Now it's just his hammer four, and it's even bigger than before. It doesn't look like it has any blood residue, though. It's that is that suspicious individual responsible for killing Taka too? I don't know how it'd be humanly possible for the same potato to have killed both of them. So I'm kind of leaning towards two killers, but then again, we're down to six people if that happens. However, but why is it Justice Hammer 4? Huh? What do you mean? Hmm. Celeste was attacked with Justice Hammer 1, then Afumi was hit with Justice Hammer 2. But this time it was Justice Hammer 4. What happened to number three? Yeah, these these three wouldn't know anything about it, uh, Makoto. Uh, what? What's the matter? Oh, well, when you mes- mentioned Justice Hammer 3, you just reminded me. What? Out with it. Do you know something? Actually, Taka's not the only one that's been killed. Hifumi's dead too. What? Hey! Hifumi's been killed? Y- yeah. I see. Which is why you came to get us. Then we'd better go check it out. Damn. Of course, come on. So Sakura, Byakuya, and I rushed out of the physics lab. But as soon as we're out of the physics lab, is this going to be Hiro or Kyoko or both? Oh. Oh. Celeste, aren't you supposed to be waiting in the nurse's office? (laughs) Something has come up. Hmm. Yeah, I heard. Hifumi is dead, right? Indeed. Well, that is not all. It is gone. Huh? What's gone? Oh, Justice Hammer 3? It has disappeared. Disappeared? Oh! Oh, that's even more than I was thinking. Hifumi's body has disappeared because he's still alive. Holy shit, Hifumi didn't die. What are you doing, Hifumi? Is Hifumi the killer? But what is going on? What? What What did you say? What are you talking about? It's disappeared? Don't be ridiculous. 
come on. Are you serious? What? What the heck is happening here? That is a great question, Sakura. I would love to know the answer. Yeah, all of us are confused. Even the smart, and even the smarty pants of the room have no idea what's going on. I have no idea what's going on. This game has gone completely off the wall. Um, so I'm glad that the Ace Attorney progression of cases is definitely occurring in this game too, because it's just getting out, out, out of the like completely absurd now, and I love it. Hey, everyone, back to the nurse's office. I practically leapt down the stairs, nearly losing my balance. I reached the nurse's office completely out of breath. I couldn't believe my eyes. Ifumi's body was there just a few minutes earlier. It's gone now. It just disappeared? Were you not in the room the entire time? Celeste looks so suspicious. It's... Especially after how they wrote last chapter, I'm struggling to believe she did it because she looks so suspicious right now. Oh yeah, Hina was there. Oh yeah. Me and Celeste went to the bathroom. Oh. Oh, okay. But we were only gone for like a minute. And then when we got back... Indeed. This must be the work of the culprit. They must have come and carried the body away. They must be really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. It does kind of give the vibes that the spy might be responsible. Okay. We're all gonna die here. We're gonna die just like those guys died. Oh yeah, Celeste is shaken. What, what did you say? I don't believe this. I don't believe a body would just disappear. Why? First, there were two murders. And now one of the bodies has been taken. Oh my god. I wonder... I wonder if we're gonna... If Waltoko's been passed out the whole time. I wonder if, um... If Taka's body is gonna disappear as well. This is... Unnatural. Huh? Uh, hold on. What do you mean two murders? Hina. Taka's been killed. We found him in the equipment room. No way! Uh, it can't be. Taka too? It can't be, it can't be. No! Hina. Calm down. We're all, we're all gonna die. All of us, they're gonna kill all of us. <laughs> then who might the next target be? Toko? Huh? What? I completely forgot, she's still unconscious in the equipment room. Well. You left her at the scene of the crime? We didn't have a choice. She passed out and she refused to wake up. Huh? So she is still unconscious? Damn. Wait, so you knew she was still up there and said nothing? Why? <laughs> that annoying little insect that clings to me wherever I go. We'd be better off without her. Bastard! Wow, that's interesting because Sakura... It's interesting Sakura says that given how much Sakura does not like Genocide Jack slash Jill. Calm down. You forgot about her, didn't you? You have no right to blame me. Every everyone stop fighting. Right now we need to we need to hurry back. Huh? I can't take this anymore. I don't want anyone else to die. Damn. Yakia, if something's happened to Toko, I'll never forgive you. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he cares about your forgiveness. We shot out of the nurse's office and bolted up the stairs, heading back to the third floor. This is such a ridiculous go wild goose chase. And we still have not gotten to the investigation either. We ran back to the equipment room at full speed. And when we got there... Oh my god, was the body gone? Toko, yep, the body's gone. Oh my goodness, thank god you're okay. But right away I noticed... There was something very different here. Holy shit. It was gone. Taka's body, which should have been right there, had disappeared. Th this is... This can't be happening. <sighs> Are we hallucinating all this or something? Yeah, Byakuya is the most shaken I think he's been the entire game. No, it's not a hallucination. I know I saw it before. What I'm seeing now isn't what I saw before. Huh? 
What? What? Are you saying Taka disappeared too? Stop talking. Stop saying disappeared. It didn't just vanish into thin air. Obviously, whoever did this has hidden the body. But why would they do that? <laughs> I couldn't possibly begin to imagine. <laughs> anyway, our costume suspect is clearly continuing his crime spree. Huh? We gotta hurry up and catch him before he kills all of us. Not possible. Oh, I don't think you have to worry about that. Yeah, because the limit, you can only kill two people per crime. Huh? Hmm. Think about it. Who could possibly be responsible for killing and hiding these dead bodies? Well... Uh, um... Hmm. When Afumi's death cry went up, everyone here was together on the third floor. It is so. After that, we split up into two groups. Hmm. And now this time, you all came here as a group from the nurse's office. In other words, the only ones who could have done this are Hiro and Kyoko, who are still missing. Yeah? I, I kind of think at this point, my prediction is going to be Kyoko's the spy and Hiro's the murderer, but who knows? Uh, hold on a second. Kyoko has an alibi for when Celeste and Ifumi were attacked. There's no question that she was in the dining hall with us. Hm. You seem very adamant about defending her. Perhaps you are in love? Oh my god, Tagami. Th that's not it at all, although I kind of am in love with Kyoko just a little bit. That's fine. But I am more in love with you, master. Huh? Say what now? Well, anyway, yes, I do accept Kyoko's alibi. Let's see... Which means the suspicious individual we're looking for can be none other than Hiro. Hmm. Which further means there will be no more murders. The regulations are very clear about that. Oh, that's right. There's a rule that says you can only murder or er, kill a maximum of two people. That's right. As long as that rule is in place, there will not be a third murder. If they were to break that rule, they'd get murdered themselves. Shing! I miss ya! Mince ya without a second thought! Mince ya, grind ya, turn ya into paste! By the way, did you know that fish paste can also refer to shellfish, like shrimp or crabs? Wow. Hm. Indeed. Let's see... So, since two people have been killed, there's no possibility of any more. That's not true! There's no- The same person can only kill two people, but that's assuming only one person is responsible. Perhaps... You knew that from the beginning, didn't you, Byakuya? Which means you knew to Toko was never in danger. <laughs> I still meant it when I said we'd be better off without her, though. See, that's the thing about Byakuya. He acts so sus, but I... It is hard to tell how much of it he truly means deep down. In other words... Anyway, with that in mind, we can now relax and search for the two missing bodies. The two missing bodies. Two people have been killed and their bodies have been hidden. The only one without an alibi, the only one who could have done it, is Hero. Which almost makes me wonder if Hero's gonna end up dead. Jesus Christ. I feel like if Hero ends up dead, we're really gonna run out of characters, though. But is he really the killer? Probably not. And what about Kyoko? If she's not involved in this case, where did she go? What? Hey, Makoto, what's the matter? Huh? Oh, no, it's nothing. Hm. Whatever. We need to find those bodies or our little narrative here can't move forward. So then... Very well, then let us split up and begin searching. But... But... <laughs> there's no need to be afraid. No more murders will take place during this case. They're being so adamant about the fact that no more murders will take place. I'm really scared now. Because, I mean... I, I know that. I mean, I think I do, but... Hina. If you're still nervous, I'll come with you. Huh? Uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> no need to thank me. <laughs> then let's get moving. Yell out if you find anything. Byakuya left the equipment room, followed by the others. I have to try and find the two missing bodies. Don't say it like that. Jesus. Yeah, they've just completely vanished. Um. Yeah, we already kind of... Wait. Uh, no. Um... Let's check the rec room again. Let 
No reason they'd suddenly be in the art room or that, whatever. That'd be kind of dumb. Okay, nothing here. Three B. All right, let's check three A now. Whoa! <sighs> oh shit, that kind of scared me. Makoto, come on. Or Makoto, why are you just standing there? We need to get to the repository, huh? You mean? Indeed. I found them. Ifumi and Taka's bodies had both been hidden in the repository. Goodbye. I've already told Hina and Sakura. We'll go on ahead. Their bodies were in the repository? Okay, well, it was a story thing, because I did check the repository and they weren't there, but, uh, okay. It was actually, that's so funny, because I did literally check the repository. Guess we could argue they were moved after. Are the bodies here somewhere? Yeah, in the repository. I have to wonder. Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. I was definitely supposed to go to the art room first. Up ahead is the repository. The doorknob turned and I guess it's unlocked. And yeah, we, then I have no choice but to go inside. And obviously we're going to see Ifumi and Taka. Now are we going to see Kyoko and or Hiro? So I opened the door and when I entered, I saw, um, oh, oh, hello. Christ. The two bodies that had disappeared were right there. The smell of blood made me gag. What I saw before my eyes was unquestionable, unavoidable, unwavering reality. And then I heard the announcement for a second time, which it confirms they're both actually dead, right? Okay. Ding dong, ding dong. A body has been discovered! After a certain amount of time, which you may use however you like, the class trial will begin! I assume it's gonna be one class trial for both? Hmm. And so here we are! It's the Monokuma file! You heard him. <laughs> I was going to hand them out when you found the bodies the first time, but I thought something might happen. What? It was really hard to resist, but turns out I was right. Stop talking. Just hand it over already. Punishment is waiting for you. Now make sure to investigate with all of your mental might and prepare for the class trial. See ya later. Alrighty. Hmm. Well then, now that we've found the bodies, all that's left is to uncover the culprit. What the heck? Uh, hold on. How can you be so, so calm? I mean, they're dead, you know. That's terrible. Dead, gone, forever. They're never coming back. <laughs> awful. This is all just too awful. Hina suddenly burst into tears. She clutched at Afumi's lifeless body. Ew. Yikes. Yikes. Who, who would do this? Why? Why? That reminded me a little bit of the wise from Sayaka in the early part of the game. Large, wet tears fell from her eyes. The tears landed on Ifumi's cheek. Poor Ifumi. If this were some world of make-believe, that might be have been when Ifumi opened his eyes. Wow. Again with the little me meta jokes. This wasn't a movie. No, it's a video game. The end. Damn. Damn, they actually show... Uh... Um. Okay. Uh. This wasn't. He's alive again? Ah! Where am I? Whoa. Cold. So cold. Is winter coming? Wow. Damn, making that reference all the way back then, if that is a reference to that. Hifumi, wake up! Huh? Uh, that's right. I remember now. Hope's Peak. Come on, you gotta wake up! I remember. 
Everything. What? Before I met you all. I met you all. Wait, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Before you, I met you all, I met you all. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. He remembers. Oh my God. Wait, so the picture with Mondo and, um, and Chihiro and Leon was pre, was before this. Wait, what? <laughs> His memories are all blending together. He has nothing useful to offer us. Oh, the light, it's reaching out to me. Huh. Like the tail of a comet. Well, he is a writer. Hey, Ifumi, who was it? Who attacked you? Who tried to kill you? Jesus. Who killed me? Huh. That's right. I remember their name. Are you gonna say Robo Justice? Y Yasu. Hero. Huh. That's interesting he called him Yasuhiro, but he usually says Mr. Well, I mean, I guess, huh. I, his eyes closed. I. I'm very confused. The body discovery announcement's the thing that's confusing me. But... Huh. Uh, it's so weird. I'm almost wondering if, like, Hifumi is somehow behind all of this. But what the hell happened to Hiro? And Kyoko? We still don't know where either of them are. They're making it basically impossible for anyone not named Hero to do it, which means he has to be innocent. His eyes closed and they never opened again. Death for the second time. Absolute undeniable death. Well, I don't know. Jesus Christ. No matter how many more of Hina's tears splashed his face. They're about to get another body discovery announcement. I'd be even more confused. There was no second miracle. Reality set in again. Hm. This isn't some stereotypical fantasy world. Tears can't restore a person's vitality. Honestly. You have... You have no tears, do you? No blood in your veins. No calcium in your bones. At least you have your meat. That sounds dirty. Stop talking. You're just angry. Going out of his way to return just to leave us with those unnecessary dying words. Now this game has become exceedingly boring. Huh. He said, Yasuhiro, right? Then perhaps... Yasuhiro Hagakure. That is the only person he could have been referring to. So in other words... And with that, the case is solved. And somehow it's obviously not going to be Hiro. Assaulting people and even killing Taka and Ifumi, and then going so far as to hide their bodies. A criminal that hides his face behind a mask and uses a bunch of giant wooden hammers. Is that what Hiro is? What is this? If it's true, I can't forgive him. No way can I ever forgive him. To kill two of our friends. That's fine. Anyway, it's about time we track down the culprit in our little life or death game here. <laughs> Although this time, it's not all that life or death. The trial will conclude without much trouble. Oh, you'd be surprised, Tagami. Indeed. Yes, it does look that way. It's going to begin again. We have to go through this one more time. And probably one to two more times after this as well. I have to accept it. I have no choice but to go through with this to make sure everyone survives. I just have to do it. Investigation begin. Here we go, investigation. And we got the investigation theme. I love that this game has an investigation theme. Oh man. First I'd better check the Monokuma file. The victims were Hifumi. Okay, so, so it says in the file that they both died. All right, I'll, I'll trust that I suppose. The victims were Hifumi, Yamada, and Kiyotaka Ishimaru. The cause of death for each was a blood blow to the head. It is thought that they were both killed with a similar weapon. But they didn't actually say specifically the hammer because we obviously... That's it? Very strange. Yeah, it's pretty strange. We got way less information than this time than before. 
<sighs> that is no problem. After all, the events of this case unfolded before our very eyes. We should know more about what happened than the Monokuma file could anyway. Hmm. Maybe. Well. Yeah, I wonder if Tagami's like, huh, maybe there's more to this than we I initially thought. Interesting stuff, to say the least. There's something, or, there's something else that's been bothering me. Hmm. Someone else has been missing for quite a while. Yes, Kyoko. Are you talking about Kyoko? Perhaps. Without a doubt, she has an alibi for when Celeste and Afumi were attacked. But what if the killer wasn't acting alone? What if they had an accomplice? An accomplice? <sighs> an accomplice? <sighs> what are you doing here? Monokuma appears! Don't be rude, I'm here to answer your question. What question? Yep. You're talking about accomplices, right? I'm pretty sure I explained it before, didn't I? During the first class trial. Speaking of which, I'd like to ask the bear. If there is an accomplice, do they also become blackened? So you ask, and so I shall answer. Each murder is allowed to have an accomplice, but only the one who does the killing will get to graduate. Yeah. So in other words, two people can work together, but one of them has no chance of profiting from it. But it's still probably gonna come up because they brought it up. Then there's no way anyone would work together, right? Not if love's involved. In other words. Not if love's involved. So basically, you can be accomplice if you want, but there's no gratification in it. So then... So are you saying nobody worked together this time either? Hey, um... Sorry, can't answer that. It would obstruct the free exchange of information between you guys. I just want to make sure you don't forget. No matter how much you might assist in a murder... Phew! Only one Blacken can graduate. An accomplice gets nothing! So in other words... Then we only need to figure out who that one Blackened is that did the killing, right? Just like normal? Well? Okay, okay, let me take this opportunity to clarify the whole shebang. In this class trial, what you need to determine is... EXTREME! The one true Blackened who devised the murder plot and put it into action. The true Blackened, so just one person. Well now. That's enough for explainifying. Interesting, so we are saying... Okay, so for those of you who have played Ace Attorney 2, you probably, I won't be more specific than that, but for those of you who have played Ace Attorney 2, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not gonna go any more specific, but justice for all, it's kinda like that. And I won't specify what case or anything, but for those of you who have played Ace Attorney 2, it's, it's potentially an Ace Attorney 2 situation, sort of. Now it's down to the final battle between all of you and the Blackened. Good luck to all the contestants. There can only be one Blackened. An accomplice won't, wouldn't benefit. Okay, so we are. Ref so if you murder someone, but someone else came up with a plan, the planner is considered the murderer, and the the actual physical murderer is considered the accomplice. From the sounds of it, then I can't see any way Kyoko would be connected to this case after all. Hm. You may be right. Um. If that's true, then Kyoko, where are you? However, as long as she's not connected to the case, it doesn't matter. Let's get back to the investigation. Indeed. I have absolutely no doubt that Hiro is responsible. But for the time being, I suppose it can't hurt to pursue further information. So, um... You know, don't you think we should consider a certain someone a suspect just in case? I'm talking about the murderous fiend, Genocide Jack. What? 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 I'm offended! Oh! You. When did you? <laughs> I've been looking all over for you, master. When I woke up, you were nowhere to be found. Dude, genocide Jill. I feel like I am vi living vicariously through this girl. Because me and her have very similar feelings about Tagami. You, S.O.B. Anywhere, anyway, you there, Nucksack swimmer girl. Huh? Nucksack? <laughs> God, she has a real obsession with big titties. You gotta be kidding! Why do I gotta be a suspect? What the heck? Well, I mean, you are a serial killer. What, 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 what? So what? I'm like a special guest suspect every time? I have an alibi, you know? 
Hmm. She's right about that. When we heard Ifumi scream, she was with me. When the bodies disappeared, she was still lying unconscious in the equipment room. Plus, Taka's body aside, I can't imagine any way she would have been able to move Ifumi's body. Yep. Besides, I calculate every move I make. I'm not gonna kill someone when everyone knows what I look like. <laughs> they don't call me the murderous fiend for nothing. Yeah, the fact that we have a serial killer, she's one of the characters I don't expect to murder. What are you saying? That's not the kind of thing you should be bragging about. Let's see. She's excited to brag about it because she's never had a chance to brag about it. On another topic, should we post a guard by the bodies like before? We can't have them disappearing again. So then. Hina and I can handle that. You don't mind, do you, Hina? Hmm. Sure. I'd be totally useless on the investigation anyway. Yeah, Hina's gonna be the new Mondo because she's a tough cookie. It's all clear now. Then that's that. Let's begin. This whole thing is so strange. All but one of us has an alibi, so figuring out who did it should be obvious, right? Nope. But maybe it's just me, but I don't think it's going to be as straightforward as it seems. All right, let's look at Taka. Taka, he'll never move again. According to the Monokuma file, Taka died from a blow to the head. We found Justice Hammer 4 near his body in the equipment room. Is that what was used to kill him? There's a tarp laid out under his body. So they're kind of implying that Hero is the murderer, potentially, but who is the mastermind behind the crime is what we have to figure out. Did the killer use this to move Taka's body? That way there wouldn't be any blood left behind when, while the body was moved. Hmm. I don't know why that matters, though. Why does it matter if, like, I don't get it. Because we were going to find the body sooner, body sooner or later. Ifumi's big, cold body is laying on the floor. His really big body. I mean, how on earth was the killer able to move someone so big? Yeah, that's going to be a big part of the case. From the nurse's office where he was discovered to here, the repository. Which is, yeah, from the first floor of the living area to the third floor of the school. Yep, all the way from the first floor to the third, and, and all without anyone noticing it? How the hell? It's no good, I just don't get it. I can think about it later. For now, I have to finish investigating Hifumi himself. If I remember correctly, Hifumi's fatal injury was also a blow to the head. Probably from Justice Hammer 3, which was laying on the floor in the nurse's office. Huh? Wait. Something's off about his body. Why am I getting this feeling? Something's different. I mean, I see the little red in the close-up, but I don't know what that is. Something about Hifumi's body in the nurse's office versus his body right now. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure, honestly. Oh, yeah, his glasses. Yeah, okay. That's it, his glasses. When his body was in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered with blood. But now they're completely clean. Does that mean somebody, someone wiped his glasses off? I would think Hifumi himself, but who would do that and why? Interesting. Um, I guess we'll check the mallets because there's all the different sizes and they probably, they were probably customized, painted to become uh, Justice Sammers. These, there are hammers of all different sizes hanging on the wall, though some are more like mallets. And of course, not only is this a very Hifumi style thing, but Hifumi was the one interested in the art room anyways. Mallets? Could the Justice Hammers have been designed using these as a model? Either way, all of the hammers uh, have obviously seen a lot of use. They're all covered in debris and chalky stone powder. That was probably uh, Hifumi stewing. Wait. For some reason, this one hammer isn't dirty at all. And it's wet. Someone wash it recently? Hmm. Spotless hammer. Um. It's a dolly. It doesn't have a handle. I guess this maybe could have been used for Ifumi's body. I don't know. I saw this in the art room before. I guess it's used to move statues around. It's kind of awkward, but if you bend down, it's not too hard to use. Huh? But wait. 
Wasn't this in the equipment room when we found Taka's body? And look at the wheel. There's a blood stain on it. So there's blood on the wheel of the dolly that was moved from the equipment room to the repository. What's the explanation for that? Well, because it was obviously used to transfer a bot one of the bodies or both of the bodies. Um, is there anything else to look at in this room? Does not look like it. Let's talk to the three potatoes. So, um... Hey, um, Makoto, I I've been thinking about something. It's about the repository. Huh? What is it? Hmm. After Hifumi and Taka's bodies disappeared, we split up to look around, right? I was really scared, so me and Stakura stuck together. But... And we came right to the repository to, you know, look around. When we got there here, the repository was locked. We couldn't get inside. It was locked? I wonder if... If the killer was inside. Hmm. And we came here as soon as the search started, so there's no way someone could beat us here. So if that's true, then who locked it and why is it unlocked now? I wonder the same thing. The door was locked when the search for the bodies began, but now it's wide open. There might be some secret lurking in there. Because they weren't ready for us to find... Oh man, I don't know. But I'll probably have to leave this area to figure it out. Alright. Hmm. There are many aspects to this incident this time. Too many, to be honest. Considering that, it may be good to look back on everything that's happened. So then... Actually, let's do it. Yeah, let's look back on things. Mm. This morning, only four of us met up in the dining hall. Hina, Kyoko, you, and myself. We waited for the others, but nobody showed up. So we decided to go look for them. Mm. It was around 8 o'clock when we began our search. And soon after we split up, Kyoko disappeared. Mm. After that, Hina found Celeste in the rec room on the third floor, and quickly claimed and got you and me. According to Celeste, she was attacked. By, oh, sorry. According to Celeste, she was attacked by a suspicious individual and lay unconscious for about an hour. In other words, she was attacked an hour before we found her, meaning just after seven o'clock. Hmm. Based on the picture Celeste took, we discovered her attacker was dressed in a strange costume. It was Robo Justice. It also became clear that this Robo Justice had dragged Fumi away. After meeting up with Toko and Pyakuya, we began searching for the costumed assailant. We found an injured Hifumi in the library on the second floor. We took him down to the nurse's office on the first floor, then resumed our search. But not long after leaving the nurse's office... Yeah, Celeste just feels like the key figure in all of this. She's... I, I don't know how she did it exactly, but she feels like the... She feels like, like, obviously, Hero's the obvious potato, but she feels like the actual mastermind. Not of the game, but of this case. What's wrong? I saw a shadow. Something moving at the top of the stairs. Based on Celeste's claims, we went back up to the second floor, where we split up and began searching. Then, right after that... Hmm. Celeste screamed. This time she had apparently seen the suspect on the third floor. Hearing her screams, we quickly made our way to the third floor. Celeste, what's wrong? That was a rather intense scream for someone like you. This is the third time I've read that this part. I saw him. The strange costume man. Ugh. He ran off as soon as I screamed. I was blocking the stairs, so we headed further down into the hallway and disappeared. Mm. And then... Yeah, Hifumi's scream. Huh? What, what was that? I came from downstairs. It must have been... Hifumi, he's in the nurse's office. This is bad. Come on, we have to go back. At that point, we decided to split up into two groups. Cel Celestina and I went back to the nurse's office... Meanwhile, you, Byakuya, and Toko pursued the suspect up on the third floor. When we got back to the nurse's office, we found Ifumi's corpse. Well, kind of? Which is also when we heard the body discovery announcement play. Yes, they're emphasizing that. 
I left Celeste and Hina alone and headed back to the third floor to tell the others what had happened. However... But at that same time, we had discovered Taka's body in the equipment room. Which means if Umi and Taka's bodies were discovered right around the same time... Yeah, I'm going to assume that the body discovery announcement was for Taka and the second one was for Ifumi, but I think Ifumi talked after. Because I remember hearing the body discovery announcement play right after finding Taka. And that's when I showed up and told you and Byakuya that Hifumi had been killed, right? Then Yumi and Byakuya all headed back to the nurse's office, leaving behind Toko, who had fainted. But as soon as we left the physics lab... We ran into Celeste, who just arrived to tell us something very unusual. Yeah, this is insane. Ifumi's body had just dis disappeared. We hurried back to the nurse's office to discover that his corpse was, in fact, gone. Hmm. Then, then we remembered he, we had abandoned the unconscious Toko and rushed back to the equipment room. This can't be happening. Are we hallucinating all this or something? This time, Taka's body had disappeared. So from there, we began our search for both of the missing bodies. And after some time, mm. Celeste told us she'd found the bodies and we all headed to the repository. And, th and there, we rediscovered the two bodies that had apparently vanished. Yep. And that brings us up to now. However, looking back, things have certainly been very active. If you want to look back at the case again, just let me know. I'll f I'm fine anytime. Well, that would have been nice to know right before we started, but whatever. Byakuya, do you really think Hiro did you Do you think Hiro really did it? Hmm. I don't see how anyone could think otherwise. When the attacks and murders and disappearances all happened, every one of us had an alibi. And the last thing Ifumi said when he died... Yeah, he said Hero's name. So, in other words... Then there is no room to suspect anyone else. Yeah, but that's not what... But Monokuma said you have to figure out who planned it. Okay, but if he did do it, why would he hide his identity with that weird costume? Hmm. Maybe he thought that no matter what happened, he'd be safe as long as his face was covered. Because he's the fool of the century, you see. I mean, he is kind of dumb. Do you really think that's enough to explain it? I feel like there's a clue hiding in there somewhere. What? And is that it? That's all that bothers you about the case? Well, no, there are a few other things. Like, why did the killer try to hide the bodies? Hmm. <laughs> they probably figured that if we couldn't find the bodies, we couldn't complete our investigation. But that's the case. We found the bodies pretty easily, didn't we? <laughs> Again, it comes back to the fact that the culprit was a moron. Is that really all there is to it? The other thing that bothers me is, why'd they bother killing two people? What? That's a good question. Because all the rule says is, if you can kill someone and get away with it, you graduate, right? So if you're the killer, your number one priority is not getting caught. But killing two people means more clues, more chances you'll get found out. I see. Hold on. Perhaps. I see, so that's what that means. Is everything okay? That's enough. Don't talk to me as if we're friends. Huh? What's with that attitude? <laughs> but you have my appreciation. Goodbye. Thanks to you, I might have some fun with this after all. His mysterious words hung in the air as he left the repository. He talked as if he'd figured something out. Either that there's two killers... Or that one of the deaths was designed to give someone an alibi, maybe. Like the second death. Whichever the second death was. But if he- or the second bot- well, they were just- I don't even know. Or the Hifumi body discovery was for the alibi, which would have been Celeste, Hina, and myself, which again goes back to Celeste. Because even if you're not the killer, you still, even if, like, you're just the mastermind, you still have to make sure you have an alibi so you can't get accused during the trial. But if he did, would it have killed him to tell me what it was? Hmm. Oh. Oh, okay. Sorry, um, there's only one way in and out the door. There's only w one way in and out the repository. It's through this door. There's definitely a lock on the door, but it can only be locked from inside the repository. 
I don't see any way to lock it from in the art room, so the killer or the Robo Justice was probably inside at that point. Hmm. Door can only be locked from inside the, re the repository, which makes me wonder. Hina and Sakura confirmed that the door was locked after we started looking for the missing bodies. And the door is designed so that it can only be locked from inside the repository. In other words, when Hina checked it, when Hina checked it, somebody, someone had already gone into the repository and locked the room, door. Oh my god, I cannot talk. When they were done, they unlocked it and left, which is why it's unlocked now. Hina claims there's no way someone could have beaten them to the repository. So that certain someone... Yeah, it was the RoboJustice. Or Kyoko or Hiro, assuming they're somehow one or both of them. You know, it's not... Yeah. So it was either Kyoko, Hiro... Or Robo Justice, who very well could have been Hero as well, or whatever. Hmm. There's got to be a clue around here somewhere. Maybe I should check somewhere else. There are some places I already know about. First, the nurse's office where Ifumi was found. Then the equipment room where Taka was found. Fair enough. That I mean, it gave us a very simple order at once. Oh. Sorry. Not what I meant to do. I forgot for a second that's the repository and not the exit. Well, the way it wrote that, it, wa it sounds like it wants me to go to the art room first, so let's just go straight to the art room. Oh, the nurse's office is in the school. Oh, yeah, it was in the school. I forgot it was in the school. I thought it was in, um, I thought it was in our, like, dorm area. And Celeste is in the nurse's office currently, apparently. What are you investigating, Celeste? <laughs> I'm not investigating anything, precisely speaking. I'm simply going around seeing if Hiro might be hiding somewhere. Hmm. What about you? Oh, you know, I'm just checking this and that. The main thing on my mind is how someone could have moved Hifumi's body. Let's see. How Hifumi was moved, eh? When it disappeared, you were supposed to be in the nurse's office, right? Yes, indeed. Correct. Hina was not feeling well, so I stay behind to look after her. But she seemed to be getting worse, so I took her to the bathroom. When you got back, the body was gone? Hmm. It could not have been gone for more than a minute or two, though. Yeah, Hina said the same thing. So then the killer was able to get in and move Hifumi's body in that short amount of time? Indeed. It would seem so. To carry off someone as big as Hifumi in only a couple of minutes is... I can't think of it as anything less than impossible. Not without tools, anyways. Celeste's account? Another look at the hammer? The Sammer 3, the one that was used to kill Afumi. Someone moved the body but left the weapon behind. Check the trash can. Just a normal trash can. Huh? Wait, there's something inside. It's too small to be a handkerchief. It's a glasses cleaning cloth. Okay. So he was quote unquote dead, but not really, and he cleaned his glasses. It's got some kind of cartoon character on it. Obviously, this was Ifumi's. Ugh, but it's also covered in blood. Huh. Oh. Ah, did you find something? Yeah, there was a cleaning cloth in the trash can. Huh? A uh, cleaning cloth? It's all bloody. Whoever this belonged to must have used it to wipe up some blood. Who would need to do something like this? <sighs> I haven't the slightest idea. Very obviously, this was Ifumi. Yeah, me either, but I think it might be important. Yep. Very nice. A refrigerator. I wonder if there's anything to drink inside. After everything I've been through, I'm totally parched. Maybe just a quick peek. There's a bunch of blood packets in here for... Well, there's your fake blood! For blood transfusions, I guess. Doesn't help me, though. I'm not a vampire. Well, that's where they got the fake blood.
But it does appear. Oh. Yes, indeed. Okay. I, I thought we didn't. Mm. I thought this came up in something indeed. else, but okay. Now we gotta head to. Yeah, the equipment room. Go into the physics lab. Then hang out with Genocide Jill and or Toko. Ah, uh, this tarp. I feel like I've seen it somewhere before and just recently too, yep. Also a coin, nice. We're up to one. There's some kind of tire mark going through. Okay. Pull of blood in the middle of the room. Yeah, this is pretty obvious. I mean, all of this is clear. Like, it, it doesn't seem like it's going to be too hard to piece together, like, how they move the bodies and stuff. But actually finding out who did it is is more so the, the mystery here. That reminds me about the dolly in the repository. There was blood on its tire. Could that blood have come from here? Which could mean that Taka's body was moved from the equipment room to the repository using the dolly. Both rooms are on the third floor, so that should definitely have been possible. Yes, sir. Equipment room blood stain, very nice. But even if the dolly was used to move Taka's body, what about Afumi? Yeah, Afumi's body went from the first floor to the third floor. That is actually a good point. Afumi's body was in the nurse's office on the first floor. Even with the dolly, there's no way to get it up to the third floor. That's still a total mystery. Well, the reason why is because Hifumi got Hifumi's body up to the third floor. Samur 4, Weapon Q Taka. Yep, same basic comment. And last but not least, Genocide Jill. I was sleeping right here when the killer carried the body away. What? 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 I'm super pissed I missed such an ultimately rare event. Yeah, that does seem like Jill in a nutshell. Hmm. So where to go now? <laughs> so this is where you were. I w I've been looking for you. You have? <laughs> I wanted to thank you for what you did. Not that you meant to, but you ended up making this little game of ours very interesting indeed. Uh, um... <laughs> you should go to Hero's room. Oh, and let me give you this. Yeah, I was about to say, this is the wrote, note Hero wrote to get us all to meet up, right? <laughs> you remember well. Well, the penmanship was pretty remarkable, so it left an impression. Oh, sorry, it's that was me. It's all clear now. Anyway, this makes it clear, right? This is a trap. What is? <laughs> Things grow ever more exciting. Um, what are you talking about? I've already repaid my debt. I don't owe you any more explanation. Goodbye. Yeah, I was thinking about trying to go to Kyoko and Hiro's rooms. Interesting. I don't know what Yasuhiro's message... Interesting. Um, so he said to go to Hero's room, but what's waiting for me there? I wonder if it's going to be like an unconscious hero or maybe the robo-justice costume. I'm actually really curious. I don't know either. Now we should be... Yeah, I was going to say, now we should be able to go to the dormitory. Let's actually teleport. Um, Let's see. Guy's side. Taka, poor Taka. Mondo, poor Mondo. Byakuya, my, my master. Uh, Junko, poor Junko. Jesus Christ. Celeste. Okay, uh, are there any guys on this side? Well, there's Chihiro, I suppose. That's weird. There's girls over here, too. Sakuraoi. Here's the rest of the guys. Leon. And there's Hiro. And who's the last one? This would be Hifumi, yeah. Okay. The door is unlocked? I guess I can go inside. Yakuya did say to look. It might not be a great idea, but I'm gonna take the plunge. This should be interesting. Oh my god, he's got all kinds of wild stuff in here. 
It makes sense. He is the uh, ultimate clairvoyant. This is Hero's room. There's all kinds of weird stuff in here. Where'd he even get it all from? More importantly, he still hasn't turned up. Which means he can't really complain if I don't get his permission to search his room, right? He could be in the bathroom, though. Okay, let's investigate his bed. It's a normal bed, pretty much just like the one in my room. Okay. Um, okay, so we want to investigate these, and we want to investigate... Oh, they're like literally no... Oh, wait. Dude, there's like literally nothing to investigate except for this in the bathroom. I think there's something in the cardboard box. Oh, okay. It's blueprints for something, and... Have the arms been like this? Perfect fit. But it's not his handwriting! That's not Hifumi. Or that's... Oh, well, it might be Hifumi's. It probably is. But that's not... That's not Hero's handwriting. It's blueprints for something. And some things made out of... It looks like cardboard, plastic, and plaster? Is this Robo Justice? And it's in Hero's room. Yeah, this is such an obvious setup. But wait. These blueprints... Something about them bothers me. Yep, they zoomed in. The handwriting is nowhere near as good as Heroes. Hmm. You don't even need to do a handwriting analysis. That's just obviously not the same handwriting. So now we go in the bathroom see if we can find Hero. I soundlessly checked the bathroom. Nothing in here. It's pretty grungy, though. How does the bathroom even get this dirty? Damn. Okay, so it looks like that was the only thing to find, right? Yeah, because... I want to, uh, I want to do this with the... Ah! Makoto! Big news! Big news! What's wrong? We found Kyoko! Okay, so the only one missing now is Hiro. What? I is she okay? Where is she? Wait, I wasn't done. There's more big news. Just a second! Robo Justice showed up too! Robo Justice? Hmm. It's Hiro wearing the costume. Okay. Anyway, as soon as you can, head to the pool on the second floor. To think Hiro and Kyoko would turn up at the same time. Anyway, I have to head to the pool. I ran off to the second floor as fast as I could. Are they both going to be, like, unconscious or something? Oh, no, I see Kyoko and Robo Justice over there. Kyoko and... I mean... Phew, man. I, I've had the worst day. Hero? Talk to her. Right. I found Hero. He was jammed into the pool locker room. The pool room locker. It looked like he was fast asleep, so I kicked him and woke him up. Don't be mean! I still can't believe you kicked me, man! You could have been a little more gentle about it, like, I don't know, caress my face or something. What? That's creepy. <laughs> anyway, Kyoko, where have you been all this time? You just disappeared all of a sudden without a trace. Wow. There was something I had to check up on. Oh, okay, you're really starting to actually sound like the spy now. What do you mean? Never mind. I can't never mind. It's nothing. Never mind. Yeah, you're looking really sus. She's looking like the spy. Hey. More importantly, she says that, but does she have any idea? Does she know people think she might be spying for the mastermind? And? First of all, Hero, you need to explain to us why you're dressed like that. Yeah, Hero's getting framed so ridiculously hard here. I mean... Oh, uh, well, I mean, I have no idea. One second I was asleep, don't even know how that happened. Then I woke up and then I was here. Hmm. I don't care. Do something about that costume. It pains me just to look at you. Huh? Well, uh... Let me out of here! I don't know what's up with this thing, but I can't actually get it off! A little help! <laughs> Why would you make something that you can't take off by yourself? You got it all wrong! I didn't make the stupid freaking thing! It would seem... There's a clasp, clasp on the back that's keeping you from getting it off. It looks pretty sturdy. I don't think you can get it off on your own. We don't really have a choice. Let's help him. It took everyone's help, but slowly we were able to get Hero out of the suit. It took a few minutes, but eventually we got all the pieces off. <laughs> Woo! 
Free at last. Hmm. Isn't it kind of weird how perfectly the suit fits Hero? Yeah, because it was built to put Hero in it. So then... More to the point, nobody but Hero would be able to wear that costume. Uh, um... Wait, what? Ho hold on a sec! Honestly... Don't bother trying to act innocent. The blueprints were in your room as well. Is that okay? In other words, it is obvious to everyone that you made this costume. <laughs> That's true. I saw the blueprints myself, but I've actually figured out that he did not write the make the blueprints. Yeah, me too. Could it be... It's obvious. The one who put this costume on and went around attacking everyone... That's terrible! ...was Hero. <sighs> Shall we tie him up and gag him? Just the worst. Good idea. We wouldn't want him killing anyone else. What? What? To tie me up? Uh, hold on, guys. I think that's going a little far. That's right. He may be a suspect, but he deserves fair treatment. Hmm. Yeah, I mean... Uh, um... Attacking? Blueprints? I have no idea what you guys are talking about. What the heck? You can't talk your way out of this. It's been decided. You killed them. Please! What? Killed who? I have no idea what you're talking about. There must be a fake hero running around. What are you saying? You're the only one who can wear this costume. So who else could possibly be the costumed attacker? What the heck? How do you know I'm the only one? Maybe you should try it on for yourself before you convict me. Okay. Fine, if you're going to be a jerk about it, I will. Without missing a beat, Hina started putting on the Robo Justice costume. Oh my god. Ha! Huh. See? Look. See how loose it is? I mean, come on. I'm blind as a bat in here. Can't see my feet at all. I'm surprised you got anywhere in this thing. Look at Celeste's face. She is so amused. I am... Yeah. Unless they're doing the double swerve again. Celeste is really coming off as the killer here. I'm telling you, it was Or the mastermind, me. at the very least. Hifumi might possibly be the killer. And... Not to mention, you totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. That's not a very nice thing to say. Hmm? Uh, I, I mean, it's not like I made it. I just got caught up in the moment. Wait, what? Well, either way, now we know for sure, right? I mean, it seems pretty clear that nobody but Hero could have fit into this dumb costume. Huh. In a huff, Hina took the suit back off again. Oh. Well, now you're all out of excuses. Uh, um... N no, see, it's because you're a girl. If it was another guy, then... <laughs> Makoto, go ahead. Uh, okay. Oh my god, yes, yes. Can we see Makoto in it? Against my will, I picked up the pieces off the floor and tried putting them on. It's no good. The arms are too long. There's no way I can wear this. Just a second! See, I told you it was impossible. <laughs> you are absolutely right. It seems this costume was made to fit Hiro's body exactly. But... And honestly, I don't think Hiro could come up with... Could make a costume that would fit him exactly. I don't think he'd make it that perfect. The, then, there's another costume. There must have been one that looks the same, but, but fits them. Honestly. If you insist on this line of defense, then show us some evidence. What the heck? Evidence? <laughs> you claim there's another suit, yes? Then you must find it and show it to us. <laughs> what the heck? Just the worst. Who cares? Hero's the only one without an alibi during this whole thing anyway. That's terrible! Which is how we know it was him. What? what? I mean, is that really true? I have no idea what's been happening. Could somebody, like, tell me? So we have the costume. Uh, so we just talked to Hero again? What the heck? Um, if you don't tell me what's going on, how am I supposed to understand, man? I think I figured out that someone's been killed, right? Himakoto, who was it? W well, two people were killed, Taka and Tofumi. What? What? Two people? Just the worst. Why are you freaking out? You did it. Please. I did not. Huh? Wait, hold on. If those two are the ones that were killed... How about that? That's it! I know who did it! So then... You may as well tell us, then. Hmm. Taka and Ifumi were fighting over Alter Ego, right? I'm at least 30% right! Which means Alter Ego and or Chihiro must have done it! Correct. I see. That's unfortunate. 
<laughs> Please. Ah, unfortunate. What the heck? Stop trying to trick us. Just admit that you did it, okay? Uh, um. Uh, I I'm telling you, you got it all wrong. Oh, so then. Oh, uh, I know, that note. Note? Uh, um. Last night, someone slipped a weird note under my door. And here's what it said. I found a hole maybe we could use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. That sounds like a Celeste thing. <sighs> the last thing I remember is going to the rec room. Then, for some reason, I fell asleep. Hey. The real killer probably drugged me or something. Just the worst. Not a chance. So... No, hold on. He could be onto something. The nurse's office did have chemicals that could do that. Huh? Really? I told you, someone's trying to set me up. A secret passage, a chance to escape, someone wrote all that to trick me. Ugh. If that's true, you must be one dumb fish to bite every piece of bait that floats in front of you. Ugh. Well, after being trapped here so long, even if you know it's a lie, you still gotta check, right? He preyed on my desire to get out of here, they deceived me! Ugh. I still don't buy it. Don't be mean! Well, you should buy it! Just a second! Okay, then show us that note! Hmm. With pleasure, I have it right here in my, um, pocket? No way! Looks like I lost it. Ugh. Yeah, sure. Please! You gotta believe me! I wouldn't hurt a fly! I wouldn't even hurt a mosquito like Chiro! <laughs> As I said before, if you want us to believe you, you must produce evidence. Can you show us the note? I honestly can't remember if I learned about... Honestly, I actually do want to comment on this because I don't actually know in the gameplay whether or not I learned about the Chihiro. I can't remember if I did Chihiro's thing or not. Her first, um, friendship thing. I'm sure I did. Um... But I actually remember, I was watching a uh, Let's Play of Danganronpa, and, and they got to, like, the first free time, and I believe they chose Chihiro, and they did the they did the mosquito thing, and then I kind of realized, like, oh, shit, they're going to do people that I haven't done, so then I'm, I can't watch this anymore. Or at the very least, at the very least, I can't watch the free time, so then I was like, okay, I guess I'll have to wait until I finish the game to actually watch Let's Plays. So, um... I'm pretty sure I did do the Chihiro Mosquito thing, but if I didn't, I have seen that. Like, the first, uh, free time gift thing with Chihiro, but then I stopped watching the Let's Play after that. Once I realized, oh yeah, this might not be a good idea. <laughs> I have no particular issue with what you claim, but if you want to us to believe you, give us a reason. <sighs> what the heck? For serious? Yes, Hero's account has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. It might not even have been the first one. It was definitely the first one I had never... Uh, well, no, I think... I don't know. <laughs> I, I know I've seen it in a Let's Play, but I'm pretty sure I also saw it in this gameplay, too. Now then, shall we resume our investigation? There's no time to waste before the class trial begins. But I'm just being safe now and not... And not watching any LP stuff until I finish the game. Why do we need to keep investigating? We already know who did it. What the heck? Why, why did you kill them? Tell us, hero. Uh, no, it's like I said, man. Just the worst. Was it really to get the money Monokuma offered us? Yeah, that must be it. You must be totally broke, and that's why. Please. W wait, that's a false accusation. Someone help me. And the worst part is, is that... He spent all his money on a crystal ball that was shattered. So, he might actually be broke. What are you saying? Just be thankful we haven't found and gagged you. <laughs> if you have time to yell and carry on, you have time to search for your evidence, right? What? What? Ah, uh, you're right. I need to look for the second suit in that note. Feet, don't fail me now. I guess I'd better get back to guard duty. I was going to ask Toka or Genocide Jack to switch with me. If she and Sakura got into a fight, we'd have a catastrophe on our hands. I would pay money to see Sakura versus Genocide Jack. Well, bye. One by one, everyone peeled away. Makoto. Makoto, do you have a second? Huh? I want you to help me with the investigation. 
It would seem... It looks like I got a late start on this one, so I need to make up some ground. Sure, I don't mind helping, but can you promise me something? Later, when we have time, will you tell me why you disappeared? Why is that? No. To reject me so simply? Anyway... I need your help. You don't mind, do you? Uh, okay. Shall we go? Thanks. Now then, shall we? Hey. So, Makoto, first I'd like to examine the corpses. Examine the corpses? I can't believe I'm hearing that from a girl the same age as me. Correct. Dead bodies don't lie, you know. They tell the truth far more easily than the living. Hey. Wouldn't you agree? How am I supposed to answer? Anyway. We have to hurry before the class trial begins again. Y yeah you're right Okay, then, show me where the bodies are. They're in the repository. I guess we should head that way for now. Um... Okay, let's just go to the map. We want to go to Hope Peak's third floor, and repository was for the art room. So let's go to the... It looks like we could actually teleport into the physics lab, which is pretty interesting. Ifumi and Taka. For a moment, Kyoko seemed to go rigid, but only for a moment. So then. Well then, let's get started. She crouched down next to Taka and without hesitation began poking and prodding the bodies. I knew it. The Monokuma file was right. They were killed using similar weapons. Her movements were so smooth. She was so calm. Yeah, Makoto's really taking emphasis on the fact of just how professional she is. Seeing how comfortable she was actually made me feel a little more comfortable. Hmm. I see. Makoto, I found something. You did? Hey. You remember the wristwatch Taka always wore on his left hand? He did? Whew. Are you so oblivious to the people around you? Do you dislike other people that much? N no, that's not it. Anyway, you so you said he had a watch. So then. Take a look. It's broken. You can see the hands aren't moving, right? It's most likely broken when he had his encounter with his assailant. If you notice, the hands are frozen at just past six o'clock. So that would mean the watch was broken sometime just after six, and yeah, it, so implying it happened before all the nonsense. That's right. But last night, Taco's watch definitely wasn't broken. Hey, you! How long are you gonna? Were you gonna keep us waiting? Taco's irritated voice pierced the air as he stared pointedly at his wristwatch. It's almost 10 o'clock, you know that? Bedtime for all the little boys and girls. I do remember that line. In other words... So if it worked at 10 last night, it couldn't have been broken at 6 p.m. Meaning it must have happened at 6 this morning. Yep. However... That's not all. Look at Taka's left hand. He appears to be gripping something. You're right. There's something white in there. Makoto. Oh, is this gonna be uh, is this gonna be the message that Hero's looking for? Can you try and pry it out? Me? Because rigor mortis has already set in. Boys are better suited to this kind of manual labor, right? Uh, okay. I mean, I don't know. I think at best you guys are even in strength. I don't know. Makoto looks like a little bit of a bitch boy, if we're being honest, and Kyoko looks pretty badass. So much as I didn't want to, I grasped Taka's cold hand. The ice-cold hand was nearly enough to cause my heart to stop beating. After some effort, I was finally able to free the object from his tightly clenched fist. A uh, piece of paper. Hey. Was that all he had in his hand? Yeah, that's it. Just a little scrap of paper. Doesn't seem like much of a clue, does it? Is that right? I wonder about that. Kiko then turned to Hifumi's body. So then. Let's check Hifumi's body now. Perhaps he's left us a few clues of his own. Taka's scrap of paper. Interesting. Are we just going to talk to her again? 
So, did you find anything? Indeed. I did. More than I expected, to be honest. Look at this. A wad of paper. Oh, there's the rest of it. That's right. The Fumi had it hidden on him. Hidden? Indeed. He'd stuffed it in his pants, so I can only assume he'd hidden it on purpose, you see. In his pants? Wait, so you... Why is that? It was just his pants, not like his socks or something. I don't know what that means. Damn. She was just like, oh well, I don't care. Hey. Anyway, let's take a look at the paper. Go ahead, Makoto. Open it up. When I think of how it was stuffed down his pants, it's like... It better be important, Hifumi, or I'll never forgive you for this. Ah, that's the note that was given to, um, the note that was given to, uh, the note that was given to Celeste, or to, uh, Hiro. So I'm assuming Hifumi wrote this, made, I, I assume Hifumi basically did all the dirty work, but it was, he was doing it for Celeste. And he was the accomplice for Celeste. That's current my current theory, and it, so far it's lining up pretty well. Because it looks like this handwriting matches the handwriting on the Robo Justice designs. A note? Found a hole maybe we could use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the equipment room at 6 a.m. So... That sounds very familiar. That's it, it's the same thing Hiro said. Then he was telling us the truth. However... Although, it's not exactly the same, is it? Uh, um... Yep. Okay. Out a hole maybe we could use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. The time is different. Hiro told us his note said to meet at 1 a.m. The note they wrote to Ifumi asked him to meet at 6 a.m. Oh! Oh! Huh. Interesting. I didn't even put that together. Is that right? Hold on. Just because Ifumi had the note doesn't mean it was meant for him. Could have been meant for Taka. Probably was meant for Taka. Huh? So... Part of it had to have been torn off, right? I think there's likely some meaning there. That belonged to Taka. Hmm. Some meaning to part of it being ripped. Um, could you maybe explain it a little more? And carefully. Hey. I would he have been clutching that scrap of paper so tightly. Oh, she's got the smirk. I I have no idea. So then. What if it wasn't just a scrap of paper when he was holding it? What if it was something more important? How would something important like that become a mere scrap of paper? That's what you need to answer. Pretty obvious. The note Ifumi had. Hey. And while we're at it, I should tell you one other thing. The two victims this time definitely had their e-handbooks on them. The handbooks have nothing to do with how the murders were carried out. Not that there was any reason to think they were connected to the killings in the first place. So you're saying I don't have to think about the handbooks this time, right? Is that right? If you didn't have to think about them at all, I wouldn't have gone out of my way to mention it. Ooh! All I said was that they weren't used to help carry out the murders, but they could have been used for something else. There may come a point, however, where a handbook may play a role. Handbook may play a role? I don't think I understand. But if Kyoko thinks it's important, I better keep it in mind. Interesting. Ooh, we're up to the trial. Okay. I assume. Unless another body has been found. Jesus. Oh no, that was the ding dong ding. Are you excited? Are you pumped? It's time for the class trial to begin! Like the bright burst of fireworks, like the flash of a soul clashing with life and death. And so, with no further ado, everyone please meet at the usual spot. Sounds fun, Monokuma. Make your way to the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon. It would seem... It's unfortunate, but I suppose this is where our investigation comes to an end. You'll have to figure out the rest for yourself and come to the proper conclusion. Yeah, you're right. Shall we go? Well, we'd better get going. Okay. Oh, alright. Well, let's get the... Let's get up to the pre-trial prep moment. 
That's interesting. He didn't even have any pre-dialogue there. Oh, uh, this room is getting smaller. Like, the, the amount of people in this room is getting less and less each time, and it's crazy. I mean, obviously, but it's weird to see this few people now. Everyone had heard Monokuma's proclamation, and they were gathered by the red door. As soon as we were all there... Oh. Monokuma appears! Hello! 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 He's multiplied! Wrong! Nope, not multiplication! It just looks that way because of an illusion! I'm moving so fast it only looks like I've multiplied! Yeah, you guys tell! Which one is the real Monokuma? What? Whew. Can we just get on to the elevator already? Boy, tough crowd. You're not playing along, along, along. Stop talking. We're not here to play with you. Okay. Okay, fine. Hey, hey! And if everyone's here and ready to go, please board the pain train, or er, elevator. I'll see you guys down there. Let's go. Okay then, shall we? <laughs> please! <laughs> Hold on, I'm not metal mentally prepared yet. What the heck? You'll never be mentally prepared. You can't run away anymore, hero. You're gonna pay for your sins. What the heck? I told you already, I didn't do it. For serious, man. Hmm. That reminds me, did you ever find the other costume or the note? We never found a second costume, but we did find the note. <sighs> uh, well, no, but... <laughs> How unfortunate. Then it would seem we have our culprit. <laughs> Not necessarily, Celeste. Hey. This isn't the place to talk about it. Save your accusations for when we get to the courtroom. That's right. She's right. Let's get down there first, then the story can really begin. Yeah, good idea. That's right. I have to... I have to do it. I can't let whoever killed Ifumi and Taka get away with it. For, whoever, for everyone who's still alive... And for the two that lost their lives, I want to look at the... Well, no, we're going to get a chance in the pre-trial prep. I'm not going to bother, actually, to look at the... We'll go over the evidence in the pre-trial prep. And for the two that lost their lives. I think I said that, actually. Oh, well. Ifumi and Taka. Yikes. The one who killed Ifumi and Taka. The one who killed two of our friends. Jesus. The killer is... One of us. Someone right here. Yep. <laughs> it would appear the culprit has been confirmed. This trial will be over in no time. <laughs> Were you listening? Wait till we get to the courtroom to begin your arguing. All right, nothing interesting, but Kyoko? Hey. The story begins when we get down there. All right, same deal. I'm not going to talk to Hiro. I'm not going to bother. Uh, he'll, he'll get his chance to be proven innocent in a few. I took one last deep breath and exhaled slowly. Probably next week. I don't know how often I'll be posting these. Probably once a week. I'm just guessing because it's... I haven't started posting these yet. I began to walk toward the elevator. Once everyone was aboard... Here we go. The doors closed on their own. And the steel box began to move. I'll have to see how short this part is. After I uh, finish recording, and maybe I'll combine this with the last part, because I know the last part was a lot shorter. So maybe you guys will get a two-in-one session, or maybe not. I don't know. The clunking of the elevator kept us company as we fell further and further down. There was no going back. Till we settled all this, we couldn't go anywhere. I'm not sure how long it was before the elevator finally came to a stop. Elevator doors slid open. Opening up to a cruel fate. Is he going to say the line again? Oh, the courtroom looks really different this <laughs> time. <laughs> when I see all of you gathered together like this, I realize just how few of you there are left. Your school life is slowly reaching its climax. Just the worst. Only because of you. <sighs> Why? Why are you making us do such cruel things to each other? Wah wah? Wah wah? Do you really hate me so much? But I'm so cute. Come on. Stop goofing around and begin the trial. <laughs> Don't rush me. Of course I'm going to start it. That would never be like, stay tuned for the action-packed class trial after this commercial break.
Oh, really? Because there's a good chance this is somehow some weird TV show. Yahoo! I'd never hold out on you like that. Okay, let's begin. Get to your assigned seats. Because the explanations for how this world... Like, that's the other thing. There's so many things that just don't make sense about the overall, like, concept. That, like, they're gonna have to give us some massive reveals in, eventually. And we are starting to... I feel like we are probably at least halfway through the game. I, we're probably halfway through the game at least now. Or at least by the end of this trial. At least halfway, if not more. And so, the curtain opened once again. A deadly judgment, a deadly deception, a deadly betrayal, a deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly faith, a deadly class trial. And of course, chapter three, we have made it to the pre-trial prep and we'll save, right? How many saves? One, two, three. Oh, I'm cutting it close. I'm really cutting it close with these save files. But we're going to be through 20. I think I have enough, but I don't know. Alright, we made it to the pre-trial prep phase, which means we finished the video. I have no idea if this is going to be episode 10, part 2, or if this is going to be episode 11. But either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of uh, Danganronpa, Trigger Happy Havoc. Um, I might actually combine these, because I know that the last episode will be one of, the, one of, if not, it actually might be the shortest episode of the entire series if I don't combine it. So this might be a situation like with episode one where I combined my first two sets because my first set was really short. I thought that'd be fine because it was like a teaser, but then I was like, okay, in the next part I finished the prologue and I'm just like, yeah, the first episode could just be the prologue. So I don't know. I guess we'll see. But uh, whatever the case may be, that was a fun episode. We did our investigation. We also learned that Taka, well, first we learned that Taka died. Um, we learned that Taka died and then after that we... Uh, we uh, we did our eventually got to our investigation and it the the deck is completely stacked against hero in this case but um I feel Hifumi absolutely had a lot to do with this Hifumi was definitely an accomplice in all of this somehow some way Hifumi had a lot to do with this but obviously Hifumi is not the person we're looking for and my guess is that Celeste is the blackened that's the best way to put it is who is the blackened uh they they do make that specification not who is the murderer who is the blackened um and yeah i definitely think that my going into the trial my theory is celeste obviously last time um i really underestimated the game so i'm definitely not doing that but i definitely can't think of anyone else who comes off suspicious i mean obviously there's kyoko of course but it's tricky. It's tricky with Kyoko because if Kyoko is the spy, then the the elements of what happened last time, definitely uh, at the end of chapter two, the moment with the spy and Monokuma, definitely imply the definitely add on to the idea that oh, maybe it's the um, maybe it's like about that shit. I don't know. It's really weird. I guess we'll find out later, but um, yeah, it's really interesting. Honestly, I'm really curious to see. What happens? I'm really curious to see where this trial goes. Chapter 2, uh, the second class trial, was absolutely amazing. It was my favorite episode of this Danganronpa playthrough so far. And I expect the third class trial, assuming it's one episode, because, you know, we were kind of cutting into the danger zone of me having to cut that in half. But um, assuming the third class trial is one episode of the playthrough, I definitely think the third class, tr class trial could be my new favorite part. We'll have to see if the third class trial tops the second for me. That is definitely a very high bar, and I don't think it's a guarantee, but we definitely have a super complex case with a lot of moving parts. Even though it does feel like a lot of the mysteries are obvious, but I don't think the, it is completely obvious who the mastermind of all this is. But Celeste is definitely the one that feels the most sus. Whether or not she's actually... The, um, the blackened is its own question, but I definitely think she is, she is the one to look for. Um, and we obviously know that Hifumi kind of did whatever Celeste said, which is the other thing that has been stuck in my mind, because that was an important story moment. And that's not really come up in any context yet. We, we obviously saw with the sauna scene, 
with uh, Kiyotaka and Mondo that these things, these story moments that seem just like, you know, kind of sus can also be very potato. And obviously, if we start, if we start like accusing Celeste in this trial, then I definitely think that um, we're going to see that other side of her that came out uh, with Hifumi, um, the side that, you know, that that was, uh, you know, a very much a dummy mommy mistress type, which we haven't seen much of. And obviously, this case has been the, this chapter has been the first time we've really seen Celeste be phased. And I am wondering if that is all an act. That is certainly a possibility. But there's a lot going on here. It's very interesting, and I'm very excited to see where the class trial goes. So I'm going to wrap up the uh, this episode here. I don't know if this is, again, if this was a really long episode or another relatively shorter-ish episode. It probably depends on how long this episode was as to whether or not I combine these two parts. But I hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and I will see you next time uh, with the class trial. We'll jump into the third class trial. It's crazy. We're already up to the third class trial. Um, we're making progress through this game, or I'm making progress through this game. I've been playing it. Now I'm starting to get in the rhythm of playing it multiple times a week, so I can definitely get through the game faster. And then, because I really want to finish the game, because once I did, once I finish the game, then I can kind of start to figure out when I want to actually start releasing this. Because my plan, at least currently, definitely is to finish the game before I start releasing the uh, the the parts of the let's play. So, anyways, um, I am excited. For the trial and I hope you guys are too it's very interesting I don't think it's cut and dry Celeste feels like the most likely potato and that would make me very sad because I love Celeste but also I would love to see her I would love to see her execution I would love to see her breakdown uh, and all that so like I but on the flip side she is probably tied for my second favorite character or maybe even is. I think she is honestly probably my second favorite character behind Tagami. It's probably Tagami, Celeste, and then Toko and Kyoko, maybe. And Mondo was up there. I, I love Chihiro. I mean, there's a lot of other potatoes. But um, as far as living characters, I definitely say those are my top four. Um, so, yeah. Anywho, we'll, we'll end it off there. So, obviously, check out all the sauces and stuff. And, yeah. Anyways, Flame and Shark signing out. I mean, like the links in the description, all that jazz. Anyways, Flame and Shark signing out. Hope you guys have a wonderful, fantastical day, and I will see you next time with another video. Thanks for watching. Peace.